I read a study or something that said like people who have their phones on the table while they're talking, communicating, mm-hmm. they're just somehow a lot less engaged in the conversation, even subconsciously. Um, that's interesting you say that because I, my boss at work was saying he had someone in um, using the stuff at work and um, like the recovery stuff and yeah. uh, he said that he was explaining to him that if you're trying to get work done or something, you've just got the TV going in the background or something like that, or you just got your phone next to you, you're like some percentage less productive. He said that too. Right? Yeah. So it's um, interesting. Uh, just even TV on mute in the background. Yes. Just distracts you and you're not as productive. I mean, there's sometimes like there's times where you just want to hyper-focus, mm-hmm. where you have like study. Are you, are you studying right yeah, now? Yeah. What are you studying? Sports science and really? sports management. Yeah. I didn't know you were doing sports yeah. science. This is like kind of what I want to do. Holy shit. Yeah. Uh, bro probably inspired by like you guys like woody and you and brick and that's fucking amazing yeah. oh at the moment that's what i want to do like yeah um i'm only about to start second year start next week i had no idea yeah see man yeah when did you start that uh last year so i finished school 2018 okay and started yeah. uni last year did you go straight away or did you take some time off yeah it went straight away okay yeah were you tempted to take time off because that's always a thing uh, to consider i was um but so I'm from like country New South Wales mm. um, and I was a boarder at school. A boarder? Um, so like lived at school oh. and uh, and like went home every, like in the holidays and that sort of thing. That's probably the only time I really went home. Yeah. Um, and uh, I, so I needed somewhere to live in Melbourne and I didn't really want to live like on res at uni because like I'm not really like, I don't want to go out every night and that sort of thing that's and the like, lifestyle isn't yeah it? it's like five nights a week you're out um really? and i'm just like no nah, it's not for me so said that to mum and dad and they were like all right well we'll um we'll have a look for like a house or something and one of my best mates from the boarding house was keen to live with um live with me and so um luckily as we, we were kind of getting pretty close to uni and like hadn't really found anywhere and um, the tenants at one of the houses that mum and dad owned that they rent out, um, like the investment properties they own, uh, the tenants said, oh, like we're thinking of moving out. So mum and dad were like, oh, beautiful. We'll just, you guys can move in there. So Perfect. Where and, is this in Melbourne? Uh, South Melbourne. Yeah. So it's a bit of a, bit of a hike from everything, but it's like... Uh, Hold on. A bit of, is it? Is it really? Well, uh, just from... The city. Ev- yeah, no, no, no. It's, it's, it's a hike from everything in my life. Right. But, um, it's still like a really good spot and I love like the area. It's like South Melbourne markets are there. There's heaps of like yes. cafes and just lots happening there. And yeah, like you said, it's so close to the city. It's like I could walk 10 minute walk to um, Southport, like the DFO. Do you take so. advantage of that? Because what we're describing for those who don't know is like imagine the city you live in, you're basically the major hub of the city. Mm. Imagine being like five, 10 minutes away from like everything. Yeah, basically. Like the core of the city. Yeah. Which is fucking the like... CBD. It takes me... It takes me five... A five or ten minute drive into the middle of the city and probably 15 minutes on the tram. Um, That's lovely. It's beautiful. But like I was saying, it's a long way from the rest of my life. So like playing mm-hmm. footy down at Frankston takes me a while to drive okay, there. Yeah. Um, most of my mates uh, live in Brighton or that sort of area, Caulfield. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, like come here three, four times a week and takes me like with traffic sometimes it can take me sort of 40 45 minutes to get here so a couple things one where did you live beforehand you did you live was it like city or like um outback farm type thing so from a small country town in new south wales called gerildery which not many people know where it is it's it's sort of uh Gerildery. about it's four hours north of um of melbourne it's mm-hmm. sort of uh near Oh, Daniloquin or Tokemal. Some people speak, might know. You speak in a different <laughs> language right now. You yeah, just, I, I don't think you'd. Un- some people might know where it is, but um, Daniloquin, Tokemal. Uh, it's sort of. Uh, it's kind of almost Melbourne, Shepparton, and okay. Gerildery are sort of in a line. Um, so it's an hour and a half north of Shepparton. That's got to be so different, though. I ask because, oh, like, how different the lifestyle would yeah, be. Um, it's extreme. Like, there's less than a thousand people there. You know, like. 70 percent of the town um and like that that's has benefits and and like pros and cons so if you just like yeah going down the street you know everyone everybody stops you don't they yeah but also if you i don't know say you got in trouble for something or something like that yeah um 
not that it happened to me because I'm a, an angel. But ah, <laughs> that's nah, what we all say. <laughs> no, but if, if something like that happens, like everyone sort of knows about it and word spreads pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, but it's also good, yeah, like even just like playing footy there, um, you know, like 80% of the town will get down to home footy games. That's and cool. There's quite a big crowd and, um, yeah, it's just, yeah. It's that, like a community vibe, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. A family. And, yeah, and the good thing having it is is it's so – I can't stay in this – having grown up there, like I can't stay in the city for too long, otherwise I just get sick of it um, and love like just getting home and, and like yeah, getting out of the city, I guess. Do you go back there often? Uh not as often as I'd like, but right. probably every like month or two. Okay. Um, but when I was at school, we had exits every five weeks. So, or sort of halfway through the school term, which is like where it's like a long weekend and you have to like leave the boarding house. You don't have to go home, but like you have to leave the boarding house. The boarding mm. house closes for the weekend. Um, and that's when most people would go home um, other than holidays. So Why would they close a boarding house over a weekend? Um, yeah, for the long weekends. Oh, so okay. there was four over, so halfway through each term or right. halfway-ish. What um, was it like living there? So fun. I loved it. Um, it's just like... That was high school? Yeah, yep. So I was there year nine to 12 um, and just like, just, yeah, I loved it. Like, it's such so a foreign fun. concept to me because... Yeah, and, and it is to so many know. people. Um, and so many people that weren't boarders are like, oh, I could never imagine what it's like boarding. Some people say, oh, I wish I, I, wish I could have boarded. And then people are like, no, nah, I'd hate boarding. But... I, I don't know many people that have boarded that didn't enjoy it. Give me the pros and cons because you're living... Okay, explain uh, what it is. So you're basically living in a big a big house close to or on um, on at school and it's, uh, it's just, yeah, a big house full of like... Well, we had... So obviously Caulfield was co-ed, so we had boys and girls, except we didn't obviously live together. Um, and we had a big boys boarding house where you'd it's pretty much just your home you have like lots of rooms like a dorm mm. sort of thing um are you still living by yourself in a room uh in year 12 you get your own room and sometimes in year 11 but um yeah you don't like some like you don't year uh, 9 10 11 i was with someone and like start of year 11 i was in my own room and didn't really like it so okay but year 12 we were in our own rooms um and that was probably needed. Do you like the started. lifestyle? What's a lifestyle like? Do you have to cook everything for yourself? Uh, no, no. So they have cooks and stuff there, um, which is like they cook pretty good food. Yeah. At Caulfield, like Caulfield's pretty lucky. We have good, um, good chefs there. Okay. Um, other some other boarding schools aren't as aren't as good, from what I've heard. Is this accessible to like the average student, the average person, or is it more like like okay, you actually need like a couple tens of thousands to afford this per year? Uh, yeah, like it is more expensive, but. A lot of the boarding house, they give out a lot of boarding scholarships because they're trying to get people into the boarding houses. Um, and it's become more popular recently, like they're giving out more scholarships and stuff. Um, but Did you get one? Uh, no, I didn't. Not at Caulfield. I got offered one somewhere else, but I, my brother was already at Caulfield. I had a, an opportunity to go to, to other schools, but um, my brother was at Caulfield and like touring the like uh, the like boarding house and stuff there it just felt like a lot more sort of homely and and that sort of thing and having my brother there definitely helps and my dad went to Caulfield when he was younger so um yeah it's like a family thing yeah and it's a lot smaller it's quite a small boarding house compared to the other how many students are there? schools probably oh, between 80 and 90 or probably anywhere between 80 and 100 That's but it. fluctuates yeah it's quite is it a like, bunch of rascals just running around there are like that that will you said you said what are the pros and cons like that is one of the cons is is if you want to like people can get very annoying and if you want to like you don't get a lot of downtime to yourself mm. um especially when you don't have your own room so yeah that's that's probably one of the cons is if you're sort of in a bad mood or you're tired or something yeah. it's hard to hard to sort of escape from everything um but it's so good because like if that that can also be a pro is like if you if you're struggling or if if you just want to be like with your mates and stuff you just like the 15 meters away so is it do you almost create like a family bond like yeah, you have a group of guys yeah. and girls yeah. that you're just especially your own year level like you just get so close with them all and like especially in year 12 um i found that like i didn't get along with some people as much in year like year 9 to 11 and yeah. then year 12 i i became a lot closer with a lot more of the borders just probably through like struggles of year 12 and that sort of thing but are they still friends to the, I know it's only been a year or two but are um, they still like close friends yeah yeah definitely like if I saw them like 
I, I probably don't make as much of an effort to catch up with all of them as I should, like, yeah. um, but I still catch up with like a fair few of them. And like, um, if I saw any of them down the street, like I'd stop and have a good chat or say we should catch up another time or something like that. Um, so yeah, like they're still, like I'd still say they're good friends of mine. And So like pro, like family vibe, yeah. really close yeah. bonds. Yeah. Con. Con to that, it would be like is, always around people. Yeah. Um, if you're not a people person, then you probably wouldn't really enjoy it. Is that the main thing? What else wouldn't people consider about that? What do you mean? Like, like, is there any other like major things that like oh, people don't consider about that type of living situation um, that you had experience there? You're like, no, nah, it's man. quite, it's quite strict as in like you have to have. So like if we were going to stay out at someone's place on a Saturday night, we'd have to have like a, what's called a leave request in on a Wednesday night so that then, and then that has to be approved by your parents and then the Whoa. like head of the boarding house to, That's weird. yeah, which is weird, but you can see why they do it. Like, you can't like no one could just like leave on a saturday night and like just tell whoever's mm. on duty in the boarding house like that they're gonna leave um i guess like it's a weird th- it's like a because pr- they have a responsibility for you okay um, like and they're pretty much your parents why uh, like, like a, your guardians you're, yeah pretty much yeah exactly your guardians um when you're not at home so sounds like a nice prison it, 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 that you we, need a pass to leave <laughs> we we s- like when we were sick of the boarding house, a lot of times we'd refer to it as a prison. So that's really <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, okay, can you just walk out? Like there's uh, gates, there's doors. There's well, yeah, you could. And, then what? Um, <laughs> like if people they have caught, done if it. They, I'm sure. Yeah, oh, 100 percent. And if they caught you, like you'd be in trouble. But yeah, you, you can go on like what's called local leave, where you just go to whoever's on duty, um, who we'd call the tutor. Um, who's on duty in the boarding house and you'd say can I just go on local leave which is just like down the street or something but you still um, need to get permission but interesting you, yeah because yeah. they need to know where you are yeah exactly and they but like they have your phone and like imagine if there was like a, a fire yeah. and you didn't check out sure, on local leave and they everyone got to the evacuation part and, and they were like Lockie's cooked yeah <laughs> they, they were like where's Lockie right. like is he burnt to a crisp yeah like <laughs> <laughs> And, and I'm just strolling down the street because I forgot to sign out on local leave. Damn. So they have that sort of responsibility for you, but yeah. There you go. Yeah. It's so different. I've never heard of anyone living there. Yeah, that's um, that's something that like people were sort of like, sort of, I don't know, a bit, little bit shocked about is like how sort of strict it is. But when you live there, you, you kind of just become second nature and you just know yeah. like, oh, I've got to check out. It becomes a normal. Has yeah, that exactly. tr- is there is it like you feel more freedom now or is it like no my parents still give me kind of a disciplined strict approach um i definitely have like a lot more freedom like i could just go out on like a any weekday if i wanted to and, and or like just leave obviously leave the house whenever i want to that sort of thing but um it's it's yeah it's kind of you definitely notice how when you leave you notice sort of how how strict it is and at times it's really frustrating because you just want to like go do something this is when you're in the boarding house like it's at times um it's sort of frustrating because you just want to want to go do something and and you can't because um you know you you can't like you're just not allowed to leave you need passes and yeah permissions. exactly um if there's a special like family something or like if parents come down and and they only gave you like a day's notice um like your family can or your guardians can take you out um, without having to put okay. in like a leave, but they have to come and like check you sure. out. But Interesting. I remember yeah. when I was living in Singapore, like yeah. it reminds me of some of the situation you had, like where I was living obviously on campus um, studying and what we had is every floor, there was so many buildings, it's huge, huge campus and mm. e- every floor was a different gender, number one. Yeah. Number two, I was lucky enough, I wanted to be in a room by myself and mm. I got that. Um, otherwise you're living with somebody else in your room. Yeah. But what I noticed was similar to you is that we, I developed like a super family of like close mm. friends, which yeah. was fucking awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You travel with them, you study with them, you, you hang out, you have lunch and dinners mm. on campus. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. But I noticed I had never been more social in my life mm. than that period of time. Right. And when I want to distance, I just, fuck, I, I have like relish time by mm. myself. Yeah. And that's the thing. So what I've noticed, so I've been living out like in a share house with um, a couple of people for almost or coming up to a year um, sometime this month. But uh, I've noticed that in the boarding house, it yeah, you are a lot more, even just at school, you're, you're so much more social. Like um, even like I've noticed 
my phone would be going off a lot more than it is than it has been sort of the last year when I've been living living away from a lot of my friends and that sort of thing whereas and you like you said you, you sort of relish the time where you where you're on your own but now I feel like I'm the opposite and I'm more relishing the time when I'm with my friends mm. and yeah it, it you just like not alone but like in a in a way you are like on your own a lot more mm. when you're not not living not even yeah not at school or not not living in the boarding house that um, makes sense it's like you flipped your lifestyle yeah exactly yep so mm. yeah and now you have exercise science that you started which i had no idea which is saying it's still crazy yeah. which is awesome <laughs> though but why why did you really decide to start that and what's the vision with that um i think so i kind of got into all that stuff because I was just doing so much research and stuff for my footy that I was like, how can I get better? Like, I was just like looking into literally everything, like like gym stuff, nutrition, all that sort of thing. Mm. Like probably started sort of year 10. And then I just became obsessed with that sort of stuff, like probably unhealthily obsessed with it. And just like, just did so much research that it became like a passion. And I'd like watch videos on YouTube about it and like all that sort of thing. And started to get a lot more like into the gym and that sort of stuff. And, and then just, yeah, kind of, felt like i guess fell in love with it and and wanted to do that at uni so that's so interesting because that yeah. parallels i think my what how i got into it with basketball yes or, yeah because i you try to stop you said about year 10 i was about 15 years old which is not that far off it but similar time periods where yeah. you try and solve your own problem try and optimize your own performance yeah. and health 100 percent. and then through that you gain this oh shit this is really interesting. Yeah. And this curiosity is that's, satiated. I, if someone asked me how I wanted to do this course, that's probably how I'd explain it. Just just started to research a lot more things for, for my footy and fell in love with it's it. It's a great sign that like you're doing something that like as a young human being in the world, a young adult in the world, especially coming out of high school not long ago, you have all these different pressures you put on yourself from society, parents, da, 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 da. You're almost expected to have an answer to the career path yep. in fact when the reality is brother there's you can pick so many things throughout your life yeah. you can be as many things as you want to be yeah. right but a quick answer like I don't know what I want to do okay what are you curious about yeah where do you find your time where do you spend your time when you're when you don't have to do something yeah when you're just on that's your a, own that's a good good point yeah um well because like i've like at the moment if i had to pick something yeah like a job to do like i'd do something like this but i always say like i don't know if it's exactly what i want to do and like it could well change in even if i start doing it and don't enjoy it it could well change in in three or four years like i've still got still got well i'm only doing three units at uni um for the first where we do trimesters at deakin so i'm there too yeah yeah so um so I might do one over third trimester. So even that's seven out of eight units. So um, I'm not going to be doing completing my course in in four years. That's okay. Um, which is yeah, which is you I'm know, not worried about. But but here's the thing: you can do here's a, the the whack ass thing about exercise science degrees in Australia. Yeah. You can finish a three year degree. You can even do a double and do a four year degree like I'm doing. Right. You can finish it, and not. You're not qualified legally yeah. to coach and train people. Yeah. That's whack. Yeah. Why does that exist? Yeah. That doesn't make sense. Yeah. You still have to do a certificate three and four in fitness, which means thousands and thousands of dollars and another six months of time. It's like, shouldn't we inbuilt that? Yeah, that's, yeah, I didn't even know that. But, but just a heads go. up, man, because <laughs> you're, you could, I mean, go coach, go train when yeah. you finish a degree. Like, yeah. Necranus is doing it and oh, he's, yeah. doesn't have anything. Yeah, that's what, that, I'd, because I, when I first met him, I thought, he was a year older than me. And I, I think I first, cause I first came down here when I was year 11. I was like, oh, he's like year 12, about to finish. And then even throughout year 12, I was like, oh, he's first year uni doing sports science or something like that. And and I, and I then I found out he was, he's a year below me. Ah. And he, st- he hasn't got any like qualifications whatsoever, but he's already a, such a good coach. For those who don't know, we're talking about um, a future guest who I will have on the podcast on the chimps, on the chimps. Um, a future chimp, um, Chris Kranis. He is an, a young up and coming uh, coach and trainer who uh, like yourself started really getting into this from a very young age. 
And I think the earlier you start in a field like this, the more time you have to mm. absorb and test knowledge. Well, like I've never, I've never coached someone, but having trained here for almost what three three years, I reckon I could coach someone decently. Like I've never, I've never actually coached anyone, or like I could write my own programs. I'd kind of adjust whatever brick gives me, but um, to how I feel and how I like. But um, I think I could almost coach someone with all the like training and stuff that I've done here. Mm. So you yeah. put that confidence in yourself. Yeah. And you originally got coached under Christian, right? Like, yeah, how did yeah. you find out about this? So place? I sort of, I think I saw him on Instagram or something like that, and just like followed him and. Um, and then contacted him at near the end of year 10 and said, which was 2016 and said, um, oh, I don't even know what I said, but I was just like, I'm thinking about coming down and that sort of thing. And, um, and then Ethan Wilson, who is my best mate, he, he snowboard cross athlete. Yes. Shout out. Olympic um, hopeful. <laughs> he, uh, so he, he came down here probably two weeks before I started. And yeah. I think that was sort of the catalyst as to how I came down because I'd been considering and then he came down and I asked him what it was like and he loved it and uh, he and then I just said fuck it why not come down and, and been here ever since and started training under Christian for probably oh, probably four or five months and then um, Brick showed up and um, and then I was I was still training under Christian for probably a few months after that but not private like I was just doing semi-private with him and then ended up uh brick was it was kind of a mixture of brick and christian um and then brick started coaching me and um yeah he's pretty much been coaching me since probably oh, maybe halfway through last year how many uh, years halfway through how many years you've been ago. training now like a consistent weight training routine uh here or just in general in general probably since oh, probably five years i'd say and then here three here th coming up th uh yeah three it would be yeah, yeah just over three I think that's, I think that's so good. Like, if if there's one thing, you know, every young adolescent child or young kid should do immediately. Mm. If you have a son, a daughter, a cousin, and someone you know, I was yeah. about to say auntie and uncle. That doesn't make sense. <laughs> Somebody you know who's young, you're young yourself. Start resistance training, weight yeah. training. How has that experience been for you? Because it it can transcend like physical. Yeah, you become who you become as a person. The things you learn out there expose who the fuck you are, mm. your character. Yeah, I I love it. Like I love just going to the gym. I, um, but I probably started sort of year oh, probably year eight or nine, which was twenty fourteen or fifteen. So, um, it's probably started to get serious in twenty twenty fifteen in terms of like actually going consistently and that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, I've just I just enjoy it. Like it doesn't seem like a chore. Sometimes it does if I'm sort of a bit tired or that sort of thing, but it doesn't really seem like a chore or anything actually going to the gym. Um, what if, what is it, what does it become for you now? Because at the start it was like performance. It was, what, is that what it was? It probably, for? probably still is. Right. Like that's my mate. That's what I'm trying to get out of it. Right. But I, what's it become? Has it changed at all? In terms of, in terms of the benefits you're getting from it. Um, yeah, well, obviously, being here i'm not just saying that because i'm here like obviously being here it's the benefit of it has increased a lot even even just like like i've become friends with people like you and brick and woody and people other clients that come in like i've become good friends with and mm. training with ethan here and like when he's when he's home um i i this is like one of the main times i see him um obviously catch up with him and stuff outside of it but mm. like this is yeah one of the main times that i actually see him and um, we kind of try and organize to have it do our sessions together and that sort of thing. So has it psychologically helped you? Um, honest, yeah. honest. Cause yeah. some people like, nah, no, it has. And I, I haven't actually like said this, I've probably only told like two people, but like sort of going, like I was saying, going from having so many friends at school and stuff in year 12 in 2018 to living on my own last year, um, kind of like struggled a bit. Like I was sort of just like, would be alone and stuff and like if both my housemates weren't there and i'd just be like this is like pretty shit like yeah kind of struggling a bit mentally get down and, yeah exactly and and i think the main like the 
the highlight of my week was either training here or footy training. Like, um, like that was the highlight of my week was training. And I was trying to not make it that because that was probably why I was struggling um, because that was the only time I was sort of, um, or one, like I wouldn't catch up with my mates that much. And I don't think that was because I was like trying to be alone, but it was like, it was just hard. Like I said, like I kind of live a fair way away. It takes probably 20 30 minutes to get to most of my drive to most of my mates and um yeah like it would it, this would be the highlight of my week so i mm. definitely think last especially late last year it, it definitely helped helped me like yeah just get through a bit of a tough time but well yeah. you you sound like like you got to be self-aware and you got to learn who you are you sound like a person who I mean, I think we all need each other. People need people. But yeah. you sound like especially a person who thrives off the having other people around them yeah, to bounce I, off. I, yeah, I, I get pretty bored if I'm on my own. Like, I, I definitely need alone time, which everyone does. But is that Woody's music? Yes, it is. <laughs> See, it's, what's really good about these mics is they don't, they don't pick it up. Yeah. Like, we'll hear it. Yeah, I was, I was thinking because I thought thunk. the other week when someone was on here um, that, that some, some Woody was playing music or something, but yeah, they did. You might hear up. a faint, yeah, a faint, <laughs> a doof. faint, faint bootleg. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, everyone needs their alone, like their alone time, obviously. But um, I think I definitely enjoy being around people more, um, and when that's why when both of my housemates are out and um, and I'm on my own, like kind of started to struggle a bit um, but like that i think that's good because it exposes you to a weakness yeah yeah and and now i think there was a time where i wasn't making wasn't really making an effort to say anyone and that sort of thing and now now that i've been through it i sort of know how like how to get myself out of it and i think in a way it's the same i figured out when i was so year seven and eight um i did <laughs> you say Year seven and eight, I did. Oh, <laughs> Shut up, mate. I come up here without anyone being up here. But at the end of the day, everyone... We're just talking chips. We're just... We're just talking chips. That's it, you said it. Do you guys have any... Um, sorry to interrupt, but I'm really not sorry at all because it is my office. Um, anyway, so... Uh, you said we could be up here. Just the fuck up. Ah! Guest appearance! Yeah. <laughs> Guest appearance, who is it? Uh, Speaking of... It is... Jacksonville Jaguars Christian right. Woodford. Um, I'd just like to say, um, at the end of the day, we're Shit, just. Loud. Oh, yeah, just at the end of the day, we'd like to just say we are just talking chips. Actually, I just thought I'd come up here. Number one, first of all, I actually have to do some work, which I do. You do work? That's a first. I didn't know you did work. Well, there goes your compliment. We've just lost his compliment. <laughs> Honestly, you've just <laughs> lost your compliment. Mate, um, it's all jokes. So, and so fun. I, I just thought I'd go up here do some work. The first thing, because this is my office. The second thing is, I thought I'd just come and interrupt and just say two things. One. At the end of the day, we're just talking, talking chips. chips. The, the second thing is, I want to say for um, viewers, actually, um, a lot of people can learn from Lockie and his story. From Have you talked about your story yet? I don't know. No. I'm going to ruin the I'll whole thing. I'll leave that to you, mate, because uh, well, he's you're good at that. Well, he's sweet and luscious friend, Ethan. Oh, so sweet, Ethan, you are. Um, who's going to get angry that he's not on the show first? Um, actually, one month until he's back. You can be on the show. Shout you, out. Which, at the end of the day, Ethan, we're just... Talking, talking chips, chips. Um, but in, in, in all seriousness because I actually got to go and do my board and actually do something with my you know I do own a business but I do some work um, what's that business called oh, who cares um, <laughs> <laughs> no no seriously I just want to say something about Lockie in terms of um, he came to Woodford um, I really felt he didn't have he'd complain a lot um, good I'd, start no but this is this is all to do building his story but yeah, he, yeah. D he did complain a lot and I honestly felt um I think he, he trained for a year and a bit, maybe a year, year and a half, a year before I, I said to him, I, I, I said, mate, you're never going to go anywhere in life if you keep complaining and pull your fucking head out of your ass and have a crack, if not, fuck off. And, um, but I knew he could handle that. So I'll be honest with you, if it wasn't for me doing that, I don't think he would be in this position today. And that's not to say that I take all the credit, but I am taking credit the fact that I did say that to him. I think he needed that. Where someone who's older, who he respected, yeah. and I just gave it to him. But you know what? Fair play to him. He copped it on the chin. What, you, what was that? What's the story of him giving it to you? Like, what's that? Oh, Tell that perspective. I think he, he kind of, he probably didn't just give it to me straight one session. He kind of like, he kind of just like would be sort of like a bit hard, more harsh on me over sort of like a period of time. bit of a period, not not a long period, only like a week or two. But like he just, he was just like a lot more harsh and like kind of like pushing me a lot more. And and he he was kind of just like, um, 
yeah, I don't know. He's just, just pushing me a lot harder and, and that probably I want to interrupt you. Clicked. And then I want to see what he said that clicked. But you do that. I think it's good, man. You mm. test people. Mm-hmm. Like, you do it. You do it with me. You do it with everybody. But, but hold on. I saw potential in him. But he was just yeah. saying, but you know what? It was doing my head in. I'm thinking this kid could, if he just shut up and got out of his, like, and I hate using this because I just hate using this, but getting out of your own way. But I'm not going to, I'm not going to say getting out of your own way, but his mindset was just not the winner's mindset. A winner's mindset is who gives a fuck? This is the time. Who cares who's here? Let's have a crack. Let's have a good session. And it might not be your best session, but we're going to do it. And I think he lacked that. And I think what he lacked was, he's a good kid. Very good kid. Not rude. Nothing. Um, not a typical... Uh, him and Ethan are both good go- good kids. They're not... Not no, typical but, private school. No, no, but they're not. But what I'm trying to say is, I'm not being rude to private. What I'm saying is, they're not your traditional... Yeah. Get everything entitled. you want. Well, no, he's not entitled at all. But what I, what I was getting annoyed about is just... I remember looking at him one day and I said, I'm looking at him, I'm going, this kid could be anything if he stopped fucking blaming other people. And I remember saying to myself, I'm going to I'm gonna test him here. And when I say test, I, I, the reason why I do it, I, I don't do it to everyone. I do it to people who I believe can, who have potential. And if you don't have, if you don't have potential, because you need to have a bit of potential. I'm going to see something in first before I even bother. But I thought this kid's hung around long enough. So he's obviously wants to get better, but there's something st- stopping him. What did you say? Uh, uh, he needed someone to kick him up the ass and yeah. tell him, fuck, yeah. just pull your fucking head out. And I, what I said was this. I think what changed it was this. I pretty much said, if you don't change, I don't want you here. I don't want that attitude. Fuck off. And I saw it in his face. I thought, and do you know what's funny? He went from playing twos football in year 12 to now, he could make a VFL list. Unbel- could, could have made a VFL list last year. was the last cut or won the last cut. To now, playing A-grade football, and nine A's, but could play A grade, but they won the premiership very hard with 15 AFL, XAFL players. But what I'm trying to say is, his development over a year, he's been fucking huge. Now, what's the difference? Because my, and I believe his difference is A, he's realised what he needs to do to perform at high levels. He knows the work, he's been here long enough. He knows the work he has to put in externally to the sport. But I think the biggest thing is his self-belief in himself, because I guess for me, I, 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 I gave it to him. He, I said to him, you either get better or fuck off because I don't want you wasting your talent. And he, man, to his credit, man, what a fucking story. It's probably one of the, listen, I've had some great stories here. It's probably one of my favourite because it's not like he was talented at the start. You can't say he was. Some people go, oh, but he was talented. No, he wasn't. He, no one ever believed in him enough to talk to him and sit him down and be like, mate, you can do this. Mm. You are, I, mate, I didn't even know how he played football. I didn't give a fuck about that because I saw him he was committed enough to rock down. And he'd say, when I say that, he would be consistent with his sessions. But what, he di- what I didn't like was his attitude towards sessions. And I don't know, I just gave it to him and I just knew if, if, if someone said that to him to his face and just said, you can be, you can be a lot better, but your mindset's got to change, your attitude's got to change. And say it in the way, on, the way only I can say it. And pretty much say, in no uncertain terms, if you don't want to do it, fuck off. Because I don't want people like that here. And I think that was his wake-up call. And then, fuck, all of a sudden, boom, it just changed. Didn't whinge, didn't complain, got to work, gave effort. This is for all your listeners out there. This is, you can control these. You can control effort. You control t- turning up on time. You can, t- uh, you can, um, you can control your, your um, com- uh, did I say, com- commitment. Or you can, you know what I mean? Like, you can control these, right? You were worrying about what you can't control. The minute you started fucking controlling what you can control, man, his development, I don't know, man, just went boof. And, I t- and people say, oh, He's got to take, uh, he should take full responsibility. He, he's done it himself, but, and then the fucking day, would he be in the same position if I didn't <coughs> buy him up? No, But people me. need that, they need sparks. No, no, but, but that's, that's what good. He, this is what I'm here for is, yeah. I, I, I see certain people, man, and I just like, fuck, if I didn't like the kid, I'll be honest with you, if I didn't like him, I would have done it, but he, he showed me respect for being here and turning up, and I thought to myself, fuck this, I'm not gonna let this kid waste his talent. He's, he, he, he's best friend, it's funny, he's best friends with a guy who is, who was the opposite of him at the start. Like, Lockie was different to Ethan. Mm. Ethan was a beast, right? Yeah. Then all of a sudden, man, it was funny to watch because then all of a sudden, Lockie was that beast. And Ethan had to pick up his game. Yeah. And he, Ethan didn't like how I was acting towards him, but not in a bad way. All I was, man, you know, everyone knows I always pay it forward and I give props when props are needed. Even though I gave it to him, fuck have I given him props. <laughs> I've told the whole world. Why not? Because I'm proud of it. Yeah. People used to always say to me, oh, you take credit for your athlete's success. No fucking shit, Sherlock, you fucking idiot. Of course, I'm proud of them, you fucking idiots. It's called marketing, dickheads. And I'm proud because they're my guys. But do you take credit for their failures? 
Well, yes, I do. I, 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 I own everything, man. I can't just own the win. And you know why I asked that? Because you did. When Shandor did his ACL, yeah. that was a fucking sad time for you yeah. and everybody. But you like, you reflected. But you got to reflect. But listen, if you're listening, you see you're fucking one of my haters. Number one, fuck you. Number two. Your haters ain't listening. No, shut the bro. fuck up. And listen, I'll tell you something, right? Let's forget about me for now. Let's not about me. But listen. This is the last thing I say. You've done a great job, man. What a fucking, what a story, man. What a story. Man, literally, he, he's done it himself. He deserves all the credit. When he makes his VFL list, the sto- the fairy, t- listen, the story's just starting. But saying that though, what if you take time, Lockie, because I am, I'm going to sit back and be like, what a fucking journey. I've trained very good a- players who've gone AFL. Fuck that story. Man, fuck, this is a better story. Do you know why? It's because he fucking tipped away at it. He never gave up. He didn't have the, he might not have the talent the AFL guys had, but he's got the heart and he wants to work and he wants to learn and respect. And you know what? One turning moment for me and Lockie, another turn, I'll just say one more thing is I, um, his cousin, uh, to shout out to Lockie's cousin, you little bitch. Um, he would probably listen to this. Hey, 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 hey. hey if you've got an issue, brother, no, nah, seriously, come down, we'll sort it out. What are you going to fight him? Will you come down? Oh, probably not. No, I would love him to come down. I want him to say it to what he said to my face, but that's another thing, right? Um, when people having cracks at me, we all know we're not going to say it, right? He stood tall for me, and that showed me a lot because that that showed me loyalty under presence. When he he wouldn't have done it, but he he might not have said anything. He got to step back and yeah. said nothing. But you know what he did? He stood up for me, and and that gave me. I don't know. I felt. Really proud, a proud moment. I don't know, man. There, a lot of people have turned against me when it's been easy, and he stood, and so did, and so did Ethan, and that just proved to me. Well, they can they always have friendship in them because it takes true character of an individual to turn around and go, "No, you're wrong. You don't know the full story." Woody's my mate, correct? And I respect that, and that takes fucking balls, and that's how I am. And pe- people don't like me for it because I will back, I will back him up now all the time. And unfortunately for everyone else, he's he's got me now, which is fucked because if. The way I see it is when you got me, you're unstoppable. That's how I view it. Honestly, I view it that way because there is no one, the environment that you're in here is, yes, it is a bit, I, uh, it is sometimes up and down with me, but fuck, man, I love everyone in here. Like, we have a good, we have a good environment here and we have a winnings environment. He's, he's leading. Like, right now we have probably, I'd probably say him and, um, no fucking old. He's probably one of the biggest in terms of the culture, in terms of what I mean by that. He's just so consistent Consistent too. effort. Yeah. A consistent effort and he's just here and he doesn't whinge he just has a crack and he know listen he's gonna have a good career like who would have thought he's have a VFL career I didn't when he first started now well done like fuck you this is the best one of the bet the one of the better stories of Woodford I'm not gonna say the best but I p- oh fuck it I, I, I'd, I'd put it I, 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 I you I'd, don't have to rank it no 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 no, no <laughs> but I do I, I do, no hold on no no I do but okay. I do why not if it was I've trained a lot of athletes it's in my top five okay because of what people don't understand, it's not always about talent, it's about your journey. Yeah. And you know what? Deserves, deserves it. And when, reflect on what you've done, mate, because, mate, what a fucking journey. But you are living proof of mindset. You've just changed your mindset. You're just a bull now. I can't see, you've just changed your whole life. Just your mindset is unbelievable. Man, I'll be honest with you, you've turned into me. Like, so, that's how old I've been. Like, and I took, you know what, when I was struggling last year, I, uh, fuck, I don't want to bring this up again, because it's Emotional, but when I was struggling last year, you know who I thought to him, Ethan, all these young kids who come through Woodford who rely, look who, up to who look up to me. It's like I'm not going to let them. That's half the reason why I came back as well, because they he he did it. I taught him that, and then fucking he taught me he can do it. And then I'm like, you know what? No, fuck, I can do this. It's going to be a bit. It's going to be hard. I told you in the podcast, it's fucking terrible. What fuck? I don't like talking about it. But he did it. He's living proof, you know, and I'm proud of him. I'm proud of everything he's achieved. Man, fuck, what, honestly, what a fantastic story. Every, even dad, my old man, who doesn't really say much, he, he even goes, what a fucking great story. Because look, he's always there, turns up, has a crack. And that is what Woodford was great for. Woodford was for, if I look, if I look for the prototype of person, probably Ethan Wilson and Lockie, I'll say Ethan because I love him, but <laughs> those two, but seriously, those two young kids who might not, but who didn't, couldn't train, like where, where would you be trained if you weren't here? I mean, you're probably in a g- general gym. Yeah. Fuck that. Could you, ever, could you ever train in a commercial gym ever again? No. I couldn't. Fuck, I try. And every time I go there, it's like, oh, I can't watch this shit. So, <laughs> um, yeah, what a story. Fantastic story. Deserves everything comes his way. I'd probably rank him top three hardest trainers at Woodford. Of all time, probably, the way it's going. If he ca- Who's number one? 
Old number two. Jesse Postens was probably, he trained with me, did not miss, he missed one session in five years. Trained me twice a week, unbelievable. Wow. The, the best prepare I've ever seen. If this kid can keep it up for another two, three years, he'd be the best I've ever seen, ever. Who's number one? Shan Doyle. I've never go past Shan. He's just too, he's too much. He, yep. He's, he, you've seen it. He's just, the, the guy's anal and meticulous, but I honestly believe that the way Lockie's going, he's leading the way for the the, the, the athletes through here. Um, he's passionate. He, he just, like, people, I don't know. You either, look, you either love this place or you don't like it. That's how I view it. Honestly, people either love it or hate it. Yeah, that's and the, you. And that's that's me. And yeah. half the reason why they love it or hate it is because of me. And it's like, for me, I don't... People who love it here, I'm an, I love it because that's my personality. People hate it. It's like, well, I'm never going to... We're not trying to convert anybody. Correct. You know? This is who I am. It's not a religion. We're not trying to convert nobody. And on that note, I will leave it with back with Lockie. But, oi, well, man, fucking your legend, you, man. You've done, you've done well, brother. I love you, brother. No, you've done well. Love you. I'm glad you uh, came on and chatted about that. Do you mind moving We're that? Just talking shit. <laughs> Do you mind moving that chair? Mm. Uh, there's a little bombshell by Christian. Wait, um, uh, do you have a charger locked? Nah, sorry, mate. <laughs> what? I said, nah, sorry, mate. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Brick will be back soon. Oh, mate, I'm just going to cop it. I'm going to give it to him. How many lashings? Listen, at the end of the How day, many boys, hitchings? What do you think about all that? Uh, uh, yeah, how does that how does that you feel? Nah, I... Um, a few things to say But Obviously like I owe a lot to Woody and Brick um, Those talking. two In particular yep. um, For how much How much they've They've done for me um, And Yeah obviously Wouldn't be where I am Without them But One thing I was going to say That I was Just thinking of then is Something about Woody That I really like Is that There's not many people That you meet That truly Like honestly and 100 percent believe that they are the best at what they do that like you, that you have people that say it and and but you think you don't like you can tell that they don't actually believe it like like 100 percent fully but like he just like 101 percent believes that he's the best at what he does or he knows that he is so like that's one thing that i really like about him like yeah i, I just don't think there's many people that that say it and truly believe that they are oh, no, the best it, at what they back do. Back it up consistently. Yeah. Back it up. But that's pretty awesome, Kenneth. You want to sit down, man? I feel like you're going to have a lot to say based <laughs> no, on what no, Lockie's no, going to no, say. No, do a Christian Woodford episode too. It's, 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 it's Lockie's Okay, day. cool. Oh, man, respect, it's, respect. I'm sick of it making it all about me, man. Even my mum goes, you make everything about you. Which I it is all about you. No, it is. But I'm trying <laughs> to push it. It's good now to see you getting all these. The stories that you're going to get, I think it's real good because I actually watched... I hate to say Bricks one, but Bricks was good because it was so great. open. That was the yep. first time I've ever, bro, seen Brick that open. Yep. And you're seeing sides of people that Love you that. might not see. Yep, now absolutely. Be, everyone's seen everything. But the, well, to an extent, people no, hadn't seen you open. That yeah, that was amazing. Was huge. Yeah. Um, I got a message from um, thank you for uh, another doing individual it. in this industry who's got a, a well-known podcast yeah. um, and said he watched it and he said, Woody, I need you back on. That was unbelievable. But I told him, I said, I'm not going to talk about that again, man. Who's but, this? Danny Kenny. Yeah. Um, and he wants to be on again, but I'm not, I'm not going to talk about that because I just, I've done that with you. That, that was it. I said once, that's it. I will talk about gender about that, but I don't want to go in it. But he, he said, he goes, that's fine, man. But his listeners want me on again. And I said I was on six months later, but people like people who engage. And we all know, motherfucker. All right. Just wait, if you want to talk, sit. Let me say one thing. <laughs> We're all just talking to you. Oh, for fuck's sake. I love you. I love you. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, wait. Uh, that'll be good. Oi, oi, Kenneth. I'll be watching this, so you're going to say a few more nice things. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, please. Uh, oh, well, As I close this door. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, yeah I, that was just one thing that I've kind of just thought of recently is that he's one of the only people that truly believes yep. that. Just true, like, because people say it and, like I said, people say it and, and they don't actually, you can tell they don't actually believe it, but, yeah. yeah. And there's a, there's a sense of probably, probably confidence so much that it comes across as arrogance when it comes to that but like arrogance it, i don't think it's arrogance if if like he said you prove it and you back and he's it up backed it yeah again. okay i think that thing is always up for interpretation yeah um and people have their own opinion people hate the bloke but so they have if, their own biases and yeah, genders and 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 yeah i've just I'm, yeah i'll back him to the hills so. yeah man as you did now about the stuff that he was talking about with your complaining at the start making excuses mm. blah, 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 blah. what did you make of all that how much because christian he loves yeah, storytelling yeah, and exaggerating yeah, yeah, yeah. and hyperbolizing um, 
but maybe- I'd say pretty much it's all true. He probably, there probably wasn't an exact moment where he gave me a kick up the ass. It was probably sort of, he just became a lot harsher on me and um, yeah, just pushed me a lot more. Um, but I could kind of tell he wasn't, like he was giving, one thing I sort of noticed was he was giving Ethan a lot of love, like on social media. And then he wouldn't really post anything about me. And like, I didn't really care, but like, I was kind of just like, oh, we're training, to, like Ethan and I are training together. Like, why is he filming everything Ethan does and putting all that up and, and rarely filming anything I do? Mm. And um, and then I was sort of asking Ethan about it and he said, oh, he just thinks you complain a lot and that sort of thing. And that was probably somewhere else that I, that I kind of picked it up. Um, and yeah, then from then on, he kind of just, yeah, became, got a lot harsher on me and yeah. That's, it's so valuable to get truth. Which is what I needed though. Yes. And, and, and like, I always, I've always had like the work ethic. I've just, that, that, like you said, it's probably something that I, I needed was just to kick up the ass to, um, yeah, just fix me up mm. and, and put me on the right path. Everybody needs somebody to tell them truth. Mm. To tell them yeah, an definitely. unfiltered truth. And, and, and it, you have to know the person to know the way to tell, tell it to them. Like some people, you can just tell it to them straight and be like, this is fucking what you got to do, mate. But other people need it in a sort of roundabout way Correct. Um, because they can't handle criticism as well. Yeah, there is an art of communication. And I think going back to the boarding house and living on my own, I think that's somewhere that I've been able to, like I'm a lot more resilient because of it and, and not relying on my parents all the time, um, especially like the last year living out of home, like you have to become so resilient. People don't see like, um, one of my mates was saying the other day, like um, you just, I feel like you wouldn't take for granted how much your parents do and I said that's exactly right like just even just little things like cleaning the house and and cooking dinner at night and um yeah just all those little things like clean like cleaning like out the fridge and that sort of thing you just your parents do it all the time for you and you don't you don't take it for granted and and when you don't do it like no one else is going to do it for you so that's something that's helped helped my um my resilience a lot I think Mm -hmm. and and that's probably why I could take sort of more harsh criticism because you had been living a lifestyle where you'd have to be more self-sufficient and yep. take responsibility. 100%, yeah. Yep. Okay. What were the things that... What were the excuses you were making? Um, I don't think there from? were excuses because I think I was still training really hard. Yeah. It was more... Complaints? What? Complaining. Um, About when what? I wasn't... When I wasn't... It was purely just footy. Like when I wasn't playing in the ones and I was just playing in the twos. And that led to not performing well and and staying in the twos because especially throughout year 11 like didn't play any ones and um ones footy at school and i was just complaining the whole time and i was just like oh this is why and like wasn't i i think i also wasn't blame i was blaming it on other people and not on myself um and like towards the end of the year i got better and i got close to playing but i still didn't play but i i got a lot closer because i kind of started that was sort of when i started to yeah, just sort of take more take responsibility more absolutely um and i think that was the thing just taking responsibility for for yeah that's that's such a key take us taking responsibility yeah. for your life yeah. your own actions and every mistake mm-hmm. you make it, it's all on you i think everything is our fault everything yeah. is your fault because if it's not what's the alternative you mm-hmm. blame others then you're out of control. Yeah. You're not in control if you're constantly blaming others. You might as well take responsibility for everything because then you can control it. Mm. And then you have the power. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah. Agree. Agreed. Agreed. Now, with your footy, yes. um, how, what's that journey been like? Because I don't, I don't know the structure of football too much um, as much as Christian does. In terms of like levels and that sort of thing? Or? Levels and even like from where you started, like what got you into football? Why'd you pick that? How did we get um, here? I've, I've always loved sport. Like just lo- like I say to people, I could literally watch the fucking lawn bowls and be entertained. Like I will, if there's any sport on, Competition. I will, yeah, exactly. I'll, I'll watch it and be entertained. Um, but I think at growing up at home, it was the two main sports. So it was cricket in the summer and footy in the winter and there was things like swimming and tennis and stuff but they weren't really like compet- they were just like more um, yeah cricket and footy were the two main ones and sort of I probably enjoyed cricket more when I was a bit younger sort of end of primary school start of high school sort of enjoyed enjoyed uh, 
playing cricket a lot more and, and was more into that. And then when I came to Melbourne, because it's such a footy sort of scene, I um, just had a couple of mates that were really um, into their footy and, and trained really hard and that sort of thing and and had a like really fun year in um, my first year at, at Caulfield. And um, yeah, that kind of just got me onto footy a lot more and then stopped playing cricket and because I wasn't as interested in it. And um, yeah, just started training a lot more. That was sort of when I, probably 2015, like year nine was when I started to, like I said, sort of research a lot more into into footy and how I could get better and that sort of thing. And, and that's sort of where it started was um, to, yeah, so it started to get a lot more serious and yeah okay what do you what's the vision what's the goal um do you want to play professionally you, oh yeah obviously like that's that's always the goal but for for like quite a few people i'm mates with is also the goal but i if you asked me that a year ago i'd be a lot more set on playing playing afl now now i'm not as as set on it um just because i know how not not saying that i'm giving up uh, because i know how hard it is to get there and but like and like i'm still going to be striving to get there but um like obviously i've got to get to vfl for i haven't even made a vfl list yet so i've got to get to that one step at a time yeah exactly um so it'll yeah very close this year so far but still i think end of or like end of next week they've got to have their list sorted by so it's about half the boys left are gonna get there's probably about 15 boys okay explain how it works so vfl team for those who don't understand is well actually i'll let you explain it you oh so basically afl is our professional afl is professional then vfl is basically the second so there's every every afl team in melbourne it's the victorian like league state league so um every at Melbourne AFL team has uh, seconds who play in the VFL. I'm going to interrupt you. It's and like the D League for the NBA. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. For those who like yeah. don't know AFL because it's an Australian only yeah. sport. Yeah. Go on. Um, and the uh, and then there's a few standalone clubs who aren't associated with those yep. AFL seconds teams, and so I'm a, one of those at the moment at Frankston. Um, and uh that's it's still it's still like i feel i don't even know what i'm saying now that uh i feel like a lot of the afl affiliated teams sort of don't give a lot of respect to some of the teams especially teams like franks and um and Mm. coburg who are sort of lower vfl teams um and yeah but it's still really like quite professional and that sort of thing um which i kind of wasn't really sure if it would be that professional especially at frankston um but yeah it's it's still like obviously they still get paid and that sort of thing but it's by like per game basis um and you don't get paid over pre-season that sort of thing and And that's different from other vfl teams uh no or some teams give you if you sign they give you like a sign on bonus um but no team will pay you over the pre-season um which i think is one of the hardest things for vfl players like got to train three nights a week um and they have to work like there's a lot of tradies and that sort of thing so they're working like long hours and then they have to train three nights a week and it 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 can't it it like yeah it would be pretty hard um being full-time like full-time working and training um but then in season they get paid by the game so can you make a living from playing vfl what is probably the not income? you can make half a living but it's, what are we looking at uh probably i'd say the top this is just a guess like i have no idea but the top uh players that aren't afl contracted obviously uh the top sort of vfl players would probably be on a couple of grand a game so you could make if there's eight if you play 18 20 games in a year like there's 40 grand mm. which is but that's kind of a couple That'd of players be the on top, the team. Top five players. If we we in should the, cut that top prob- ten players in the league. We should probably cut that in half for the majority, right? Oh, at least like probably five hundred mm. majority would be on. And and the thing is, it's eighteen twenty to twenty games in finals, whatever. Yeah. That's that's not a lot of time. It's like twenty weeks. Yeah. There's another twenty something other weeks of the year. Yeah. Um. 
that's where I'm um, like I was saying like the Trip. the <laughs> the um, preseason and that sort of thing is quite um, mm. quite can be quite like can be quite hard for a lot of those boys where they're not getting paid and it's still quite a big commitment. Um, but yeah, I mean most like that's the but that is also the good thing about about those clubs is you know all those boys there like they could just they could go back to country country um footy teams or or local footy teams sorry and get paid as much or more um by those local footy teams and be the best player there how does that work how do country football have more money so much money in country footy how does that work because there's so many people when we say country guys we mean like far away from the city yeah even even uh local clubs in the city okay um some have a lot of like a lot of money because there's a lot of businesses and stuff in the area let's we'll say we'll say a country town like you think of all the local businesses and that sort of thing um a lot of people want to put money into something so they they'll put it they'll donate to the footy club or something like that and and then they get like all their money from there and and like a lot of money over the bar and and food at during like on game day and that yeah, sort of thing. Yeah, but doesn't all AFL or VFL teams have that? Uh, yes, but I, I don't think they have. Like they wouldn't have. Um, they wouldn't have like a lot of businesses and that sort of thing. Like mm. it's not as probably not as diehard because like if you're going to support VFL, there's not many people that purely support VFL. Like they'll they like most people obviously have an AFL team they support. And not many people will actually support a VFL team. Um, so that's where I'd guess there's not as much money for them, um, especially the standalone teams. Have you thought about um, playing for a country team? Yeah, well, like at home. Or trying to? At home, um, like it, tiny country town and like they, they'd still have people on more than most of the VFL contracts um, just purely by the small businesses that they get a lot of money off. But um, there's... What was I saying? That um, the country towns, the money. Yeah, well, I was saying something about VFL. Um, oh, that, that's where that's where you kind of admire all the boys that are at VFL because they could go back to a local team and have have so much, like get get at least that what they're getting paid at VFL um, and be the best player there and only have to train one or two nights a week mm. and play. Um, but they're all there, and they're all they all want to play that standard. They're all trying to get better. So that's where that's one thing that I really like about VFL, With especially the hope a smaller. Of um, AFL? I don't know how many like the younger boys probably like like eighty ninety percent of the younger boys probably, but it's the older boys that are sort of um, mid to late twenties probably now, not as much. What's the likelihood? Like how many times does a mid to late twenties? get drafted in the AFL? Uh, it's becoming more popular um, because of a few people that have got drafted as mature age and come in and had an immediate and a re- like a really good impact. Yeah. Because um, it's a long time. You're like oh. 10 to 20 years honing your skill. Mm. Um, but probably by sort of mid-20s, if you haven't had a lot of interest and if you're not one of the better players in the league, then you're probably not really gonna like um, pursue it that hard. Mm. Um, but yeah, like I was saying, like that's where you go to a club like Frank's, and there's there's a few boys that are like could they could be at home on three grand a game, but they're there and they they all want to get better, um, and that's something you just yeah you have a lot of respect for them. Yeah, it's like you're choosing the responsibility yeah. over money. Over an easier situation, yeah. train less. Yeah, yeah. that's back. exactly right. An easier situation, right? You, you, you're choosing the harder, yes, harder situation. But that's where you got to take a chance. Yeah, you got to do that. It, like you got to create, uh, take risk. Yeah, if you want to maximize the potential success. Yeah. and reward. Yeah, exactly. So go in, try, see what the fuck happens. Why not? Yeah. And so you're in a position now where you're trying to make a VFL squad. Yeah. Right. You nearly made one last year. Yeah. Uh, yeah, pretty close. Okay, and now what's the situation? What's the timeline for 2020? Uh, in terms of making a list or, yeah. or just playing? Well, both. Let's uh, go both. Well, so there's there's a few... I think we have a few contracts left and we've got... Um, there's a few boys that still haven't got a contract, so it'll just be... Um, we had a intra-club match on the weekend and 
um, they'll probably look at that and um, and then just um, they might they might play a few more boys. We've got another practice match next Thursday. Um, probably play a few more boys there and sort of see um, who they want to give the last few contracts to. But then they also have what's called a train on squad, which is like a supplementary list, which is basically they train with you like you train with a squad a couple of nights a week um and uh and if someone gets put on the long-term injury list um so they're out for six months or so, or the whole season or you whatever then, then you can fill it with, for a um, VFL. yeah um you can you it's can fill it with with one of those boys so um and then if so at vfl if you you still have to have a home club so if you're not playing vfl because there's probably 45 odd blokes on a list and there's 22 people in a in a team okay or 23 it's like 50 percent um, cut rate yeah uh well yeah so if you if you're not playing that week then you have then you play for your home team oh that's got it, why got yeah you have to have a home club yeah um at, at vfl level okay because afl players obviously they're if they're not playing the afl they'll play vfl for mm. their seconds now what about you specifically where the fuck do you want to be where do I want to, in terms of what playing? <laughs> but what do you mean, like, like what's the ideal situation for getting oh, this year? Yeah. Uh, oh, like obviously play for make Frankston's list and play for them. Yeah. Um, and then my oh here he is. <laughs> Go on, keep going. Uh, and then my thank you very much, sir. Oh, you delivery. Are a savior. <laughs> yes. Uh, got to get got to stimulate that NPS. Um. <laughs> <laughs> MPS muscle protein synthesis, uh, baby, and then play play for play for Franks and um and then my home team this year will be uh, it's really <laughs> it's really loud it's all good uh, my it's home team will be Caulfield yeah so I was at Uni Blues last year um I went there because I because Caulfield were in the um were in Premier B um division and Uni Blues were in Premier um and I wanted to play like A grade Premier I didn't get a game in the seniors. Um, like Woody was saying, I won the flag and pretty handy team. But um, this year, and Caulfield won the premiership in their division. So that means they go up to the A, like A grade premier division. So um, going to go back to Caulfield. Like it's like old Caulfield. Caulfield um, A grade. And then it'll be Frankston. Um, and Frankston VFL. If I, one, get on their list yep. and two, get games there okay let's say you get in the list what, what do you think is going to happen you know your skill set um yeah well like obviously back myself to to make it and like want to have like positive positive mindset yeah but, um it's yeah going to be pretty like touch and go um tough like competition yeah, yeah 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 exactly good um so which you want it's what it is pushes you yeah absolutely if you don't have tough competition then you just like gonna regress be lazy. and yeah. atrophy yeah you don't stimulate that muscle yeah, synthesis you don't of the all. mind yes what do you got there uh, it's Musashi Muscle Recovery Protein. You know, you is this the first time you're drinking it? No, these are really good. I love it. Oh, I just have this uh, this protein shake, but it's not as good as the shop bought ones, obviously, because they put probably a fair bit of other shit in it. But so you got a little protein in there. You got yeah. some milk in there. What do we got? Thirty-two point seven of protein. Okay. Well and truly stimulates MPS. <laughs> Fourteen carbs, five fat. Okay. Gets the job done. Gets the job done. Just keep fueling the body. Mm. Because you didn't you put on you've tried to put on a lot of size recently, haven't you? I haven't just tried. I've done it. I left Singapore, done. but I'm still on the path. Like I'm st mm. I'm trying to get to the next level. Um, as I repeatedly say and real repeatedly keep saying to you, chimps. Now, left before I left Singapore, I was like 74, 75 kilos. Yeah. Um, I made a decision mentally. I cannot come back the same person physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. Why is that? <sighs> just good question. No yeah. one's asked me that one, but. I have talked about the answer to that uh, on the last podcast, um, number six, and the Is that reason. Jess. Yeah, Jess and yeah. Bors. I've got it. Got it saved. Haven't watched it yet. Yeah, we had to, we we once Borzilla got on, we really got into a good vibe. Yeah. Um, back and forth. But I was not satisfied with my physical presence and physical uh, abilities and and stature, right? Yeah. AKA the size and presence of my body. I think if we work, if you work in the physical a health and a health industry, mm. you need to represent excellence. You need to yep. represent something 100%. that stands and, for health. And that's how 
well, just on a personal level, that's how you get more clients. Yes. If you and and as bad as it is, if you look if you look better, you I feel like you'll have people come to you because people will be like, oh, obviously he knows what he's doing, and and that I feel like that's poorly been influenced by um, by Instagram influencers yeah. who just look good and don't have and the, people buy their else. people buy their shitty like Woody talks about all the time people buy like their shitty programs yeah um and because they because they look good and, and they have a good rig and and a good head and like and so they just post all over instagram and then they make a they make like a shitty sort of program and and pe- and heap like, thousands of people buy it and that's right. how they make their money right Okay, but, so, yeah. and then my thing is, on the other end of the spectrum, we have a bunch of skinny nerd researchers, and I don't think being a nerd is bad. I'm a nerd in a lot of ways too. Fucking, let's go fucking nerds, yeah. right? <laughs> but if you're a skinny, scrawny, thin-looking motherfucker who don't look like you, you lift weights, you don't look like you can run, you don't look like yep. you can, you're mobile and you're, you're strong, mm. then what are we doing? That's, to me, yeah. that's the opposite end of the spectrum, yep. right? Why can't we... Why shouldn't you and we hold ourselves to the standard of not only looking the part, but being the part? And that represents being someone who's, who is strong, mm. but someone who looks strong because they come two and two together, yep. right? And then mental health and then internal functional mm. health and then being smart, educated, yep. tertiary education, your own self-study, your own courses you're going to, and then application and experience. Do you have the experience? Let's tick, I'm going to tick all, I'm ticking all these fucking boxes as I'm going throughout my life because I'm trying to be the best generalist yeah. possible. Yeah. It's very important. Yeah. And so people judge on appearances. That's natural. It's what yeah. we do. Human beings, yeah. right? It's how we evolved. So let me hack that. Let me try and represent something that is better than what I was and that is better than the, the average. So then people can look to me as a sign of hope, inspiration, whatever they want to take from it. Like, oh shit, he did it. Mm. Because I was the guy who thought, I'm just, I just can't, I just, I'm too skinny. I just, no matter how much I eat, ah, just no motherfucker, you ain't eating enough. So what what did, how many calories were you eating a day when you were putting on site or you still are? So I'll tell you what I was doing that didn't work. And that was about 3000 calories a day. got me very touch and go results yeah. like inconsistent results because yeah. my energy expenditure was just high so quick did you track your calories yeah i've done that intermittently yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. throughout my career and life for yeah. ages yeah right ah uh, who's that Who can only that know Look, at the end of the day we're just talking chimps all right now when i when i, I left for do some work when Shut i up. when i left for singapore <laughs> I was training five times a week. I went hard. It was, I was study hard. It was eat hard. It was sleep hard. It was uh, lift hard. Yeah. That was my life. So what did you go so, to? To continue, I Boring. went to 3,500 ca- 3, calories, right? Um, and I was eating pretty calorically dense foods yeah. and allowing myself to be flexible because mm-hmm. I couldn't afford, I, di- I wasn't really cooking much of my own food. So how many calories would you have been burning a day after, like even in a training day? Okay. Good question. That is determined by the intake. Yeah. Like, if I'm gaining weight, yeah. that means I'm in a surplus. Yeah, 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 so how many am I burning? A bit less than I'm putting in my body. So you would, you didn't know exactly. Like you didn't have like a, a watch or something. I did. That you did. I did. I wore my watch when yeah. I I did my um lifts. Oh, yeah, I, I wore it during the day. Yeah. It does heart rate. Now, yeah. what's the most accurate way to measure energy expenditure? Heat. Yeah. Because most of the most of the energy that is uh, expended through the body is measured by we want to measure heat the best quality gold standard studies will measure uh, energy expenditure via heat loss yep. right because that is what it is energy out is just heat loss yep. right mm, no it's not called evaporation but okay um the evaporation is how you cool the body brother come on man um 3500 calories right then i got i was able to put on about five kilo you fucker. Then I was Do able to put... work, mate. There's, look, man. You're going to get to a point where you're going to want to get uh, bigger too, right? Yeah. So oh, well, that was me this off-season. I was eating probably... Oh, I don't even know, like 4,000... 4, Hold on, four were you measuring half. it? Yeah. 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 Um, fitness pal? Yeah. Yeah. Weighing? Uh, yeah. Full full version of my fitness pal. But you weighed your food is what I meant. Uh, yeah. Okay, yeah, cool. yeah, yeah, weigh my food. Um, because you have demands with football. I was burning about three to three and a half ca- thousand calories a day based on my watch, which measures heart rate. You have some high intensity, well, long duration games. Days where I'd, I'd do 
running and gym. Yeah. Like I'd have to eat. It's a big day. 5,000 calories. Yep. Because like tough running session and, and a gym session, like a, a um, volume gym session, mm-hmm. accumulation session, like I'd be burning 300 calories in that and then and then probably six or seven in a, in a running session. Yeah. And, and then like just my heart rate being elevated after training and that sort of thing. And that's like quite- I'd be burning and I'd want to be in a sort of anywhere between probably three and 500 calorie surplus, like, cause I didn't have very long to put on size. Um, so were you able to do that? Cause that's yeah, a lot. A hundred percent. Like yeah. I've put on a lot of size. So, yeah. yeah. Good. He's a big boy. What did you, what did you go from and what did you get to? Uh, I think I was sort of 80 and I got to about 84 or something in How about, tall are you? uh, about 188 or so yeah. centimeters. Go ahead. Um, got to, uh, got to about 84 or five and then went, cause, but I knew when pre-season started, I'd drop weight because like, like the training's like a lot harder than like a lot more intense. Um, so then I dropped back down, but most of it was like, I didn't lose strength. Um, I'd probably drop, I'm probably between 82 and 83 now. Um, but, but I haven't, I feel like I haven't lost any strength, which Good. is, which is what I wanted. Like I wanted to drop, drop a bit of fat, but, not like drop my skin folds a bit and that sort of thing but keep my strength and i feel like i've done that so good but yeah. the, the idea that like you have to lose weight body weight when you're like everybody seems to think like oh i'm in season now i'm just gonna drop weight mm. no if you put more energy in mm. that's gonna counteract that yeah you can stay your weight or even build you're just gonna need to work a lot harder in the yeah. kitchen yeah right and sleep yeah but to give you the full answer now I got up in th- about 300 kilo increments. I went to, all right, I stalled. I went to 3,800. I stalled again at about 80. Um, and now I'm on 4,100. So 4,100 cows a day. And I realized as your weight goes up, like you're going to have to, if you want to keep um, getting heavier, mm. you're going to have to keep increasing the yeah. calories because muscle is metabolically yeah. active. Mm. It's going to increase your basal metabolic rate. Yeah, exactly. You yeah. probably some stuff you're studying right now. Yeah. So, yep. and you talk about running and training. Yep. Well, we got like, I'm, I'm going for runs now on all my off days, yep. right? So something's happening every Can day. Can you restart that thing where you do the thousand steps? Because I love, <laughs> I actually love that. No. The, f- the option for all you motherfuckers was there for 30 weeks of the year. I was, I was going hold to on, join. Hold on, hold on. What? Sorry, what were you saying? You didn't come Dude. once, buster. Dude, it was the most queerest deal in the same. Soft. Didn't I, come I once. I would have cooked your ass. Stupid. You're not going to get people going. I did. I, I did though. Uh, hey, uh, I was. King, if I bar. wasn't in season, I would have come. I was as soon as I finished my season, I was going to come. But then yeah, you. But so, then you stopped. Okay. In season. Okay. Fair. Yeah, he comes to me. Yeah. What are you going to say? <laughs> yeah. What were you going to say? Oh, I saw it funny because I'm doing the work. You motherfuckers don't. That's right. I'm get competitive, man. Yeah. I turn you into know, a different I, I, human. I, I, what was your idea behind that? No, it was for me. I just um. Oh, this was for you. Yeah, absolutely, it's for no, me. I actually thought you were trying to help others. Like, I honestly thought. Everything is for me first, and then the byproduct is help others second. Oh, but if someone came along with him and and got in a got in a good conditioning session, yes, when he was, did, oh, then it did, helped someone did else. Did turn up? Yes, yeah. uh, yes, yes. Who? Uh, I'm not gonna mention their name. Was it good? It was a girl. Oh, I don't know. I, yeah, I remember saying. Yeah. But, yeah. And then I did my Cert 3 and 4 students. We all, I all took them there as well. And that was great. And yeah. Sounds good. You didn't come, man. Soft. Wait, is this, wait, is this your uh, episode or? What? <laughs> <laughs> so, no. And I can get why some people wouldn't come. Because, look, I get how I was... I'm self-aware of how I was portraying myself, right? I was portraying myself in a way that was like pe- people can perceive as intimidating. Mm. It's not as inviting. Oh, if someone didn't know you, they would have been like, I get it. I'm not coming. Like, but, um, look scary. Right. But I want, I'm putting pressure on people oh, yeah. to be like, you know what? Th- why do we feel intimidated? Why do we feel mm. a bit scared to push good. ourselves physically mm. and mentally? And... We had, so we had, uh, when was it? Uh, not the weekend, just go on the weekend before we had our footy camp and in it, we have, um, we have these like smaller groups. Um, we had these smaller groups, the camp, and we had to come up with a, uh, a word each in our group that was like our favorite, just our favorite sort of quality in a person. And I said courage because I love it when people 
make a decision that that pe- other people might give them shit for or something yeah. like that, but then just back themselves in like and and gym when no one else would and out. don't um and don't uh and don't don't care what other people think because because oh, like not when someone doesn't care about what someone else thinks like that immediately I just have like a lot of respect for them. It's a powerful position. Yeah, because most people are making. And see, go ahead. We, yeah, I was just going to say quickly. You th- you think like people are so worried nowadays about what what people care about them and right. what people think about them but if you if someone doesn't if someone just doesn't really give a fuck about what what pe- other people think and just does stuff for themselves like first of all it looks like you just look like a better person someone it's someone that, that you want to be around um and also it it makes you a lot happier and if you don't care about what other people think then you're going to be a, a much happier person you can unbashfully be yourself exactly it's yeah. a f- you feel free yeah, mm, yeah. Like, you feel like psychologically free to exhibit who you want to be to the world and who you are, Yeah. right? Because I think a lot of people, they try and portray themselves in certain ways and they have these facades and personalities and you get kind of trapped into creating your own personality. You be you. Um, you be you and you own it, bro. And so... Even, I think you have to learn to be uncomfortable with being you. Like, if things make you uncomfortable, there's certain personality. You better sit the fuck down (laughs) right here or or be quiet. Wait, when? When? So if we weren't here, would you just be just be spouting out, just talking to the walls? Keep going. You're doing well. You actually thought me out really good. But you know what? You, I think you know better than anyone. I just chip, chip, chip. And at some stage, you're the reaction. You shouldn't give me reaction. Yeah, I was actually, trying not to, but you're going like this in the fucking background. Stop. <laughs> I, I was going to stop unless you get... But Alex, it's my so, fault. Alex knows. I agree, it's my fault. And it's my just, fault. Oh, you let yourself down. You're better than that. Normally you're better. Nah, it's my fault. But something like that, I, I agree what you're saying. I love what you're saying, but I'm just, I'm just giving you the support. Like, <laughs> oh, no, We're all just talking that. chimps. Oi, but... So, um... What uh, what um, you looking at Instagram right now? You scrolling? No, I'm actually doing work. Oh, okay. funny story. One of my mates that I'm at Frankston with, he he just got to a point, deleted Snapchat, deleted Instagram. Um, I think he might delete the Facebook app. Yeah. Um, and just like when he needs to check it, he just goes on on Safari or whatever. But he um, Safari is a web browser, but whatever. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why I said Safari, but <laughs> just Apple. <laughs> uh, he and, and now he spends so much less time on his phone. Like he's yeah. he's like starting like his own clothing business. Um, like he just has so much more time, and and that's like something that I've been like trying to do now is like spend less time on my phone mm. um, because you just get so much more stuff done when you like. I I'm so bad at. It. I'll just say, I'll sit on the couch and go on my phone. Two hours later, I'll look at the time and be like, where has the last two hours gone? And it, it just goes so quickly when, if, and you just, you're scrolling, you're just scrolling through Facebook, Instagram. Yeah. You're getting um, stuck, man. You're getting stuck in this, like yeah. this whirlwind. Yeah. And, and, and that is something that affects your confidence is you see other people yep. and, and they all, their, ha- their lives look perfect. Yeah. But no one's life is perfect. Like, so th- these people that look like, and people only put up the best photos the highlights. themselves. Yep. Exactly. The highlights. They would have so much shit going on in their lives that that they don't put up or they don't post about. Like they might have so much shit going on. I'm not saying they, I feel very strongly does, about but, this. But and and then they just post their highlights and you think, fuck, their life's amazing, but it's not. Everyone has their issues, so that's where I feel like people should not be jealous of other people and just because you're never going to be them, just live your own life. Wise words, young Lucky. But and it's something you're experiencing. Yeah. So you're speaking from that perspective. Yeah. People compare their low lights, your low lights, yeah. to others' pe- highlights. Yes. Yeah. Because you only see other people's highlights. You right. You don't see them at their worst. So guess what? Let's talk about it all. And so this is why these conversations are important. Let's open it up. Mm. Jeremy Borzil on the last episode was talking about. We were talking about how, like, what's it like to be on to get stuck in the social media whirlwind? How does it affect your mental health? Mm. What are the feelings of insecurity, insignificance do you feel by comparing yourself to others? Because we all feel it, Yeah. right? Not many people are really talking about it. So let's talk about it right now. Guess what? Do you, like, uh, I talked about it a lot uh, with them, but like jealousy and envy. 
What does that tell us? Well, what I, I learned through experiments that I've run for myself, jealousy and envy tell me character, uh, character traits and qualities that I admire in people. Oh, I'm jealous of your success, maybe your money, maybe your influence, maybe your, let's go even further, let's go deeper, your, di uh, more, your discipline, your lifestyle, your ability to be resilient, um, your, your physical stature and presence, like Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Like what a, what a specimen of a human being, yeah. right? Damn. And you can get stuck when all you say, you, you can either look at it as inspiration, as sparks of inspiration, or you get down because that's not you. Mm. It's a choice. Like what are you gonna do? You're gonna use what you're seeing as a spark to propel you forward, mm. or are you gonna use it to get you down? Yeah. And, and I feel like at times, or well, personally, I, I have both. Yeah. At times, I'll look at someone else and be like, fuck, like, I'm like, get down about it. And I'm like, like, they have such a good life. But then at times, I'm like, it just, like, it, it use, I use it as a motivation. But then when I do get down, I kind of just, like, that's when I try and think, like, fuck, I'm never going to be them. And, and they obviously have their own issues in their life. So, like, their life isn't perfect. Yeah. No, one, no one's perfect. It's a, but it's a cliche though but I don't think yeah. that's enough like you're cor it's so correct but I don't I think we have to go further because we all know that yeah. logically we all know that yet yeah. logically we all get stuck Yeah. so wh what are we missing yeah. we know it so why the fuck do we all get stuck mentally explain that it's a it's a modern mystery <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, is it modern though? I, I think maybe well, our ancestors no, it's experienced it in their own ways. It's a, I don't know. I, I actually have no idea. That's a good good question. I'd have to have a good think about that. Yeah, right. Uh, yeah, because everyone knows that everyone has problems, but you still, like you said, you still look at them and you get jealous of them and envious and you don't know why. I think you have to reframe the perspective. Like people look at je these emotions as negatives. Nope. It's feedback. Mm. It's information. And so what I realized is that, okay, I, it's not, I can't switch the flick. I can't flick the switch off. Like yep. I can't suddenly not feel these emotions, yep. right? So I have to, what's the trigger? The trigger is the people I'm seeing, the scrolling, the social media, that a lot of that is creates triggers of certain emotions. Yeah. Positive, negative, all, the, all in the middle. So what am I going to do? I'm going to not follow anybody. Yeah. Yep. You, you turn off the ability to trigger the bad Correct. emotions. We've gotten to the, one of the root triggers and causes. Yep. All right. While that's happening, I'm addressing what's happening up here in between my two ears. All right. Let me now work on myself and f all those things I was envious and jealous of, or now I'm going to work on them. Yep. Now I'm going to go into the cave, shut all the lights out and just grind away at that stone. Yep. and carve myself into the person I need to be. So then, when I reappear, I'm now looking at these people as contemporaries instead of looking up at yeah. them. Well, I guess at the end of the day, like, no one's better than anyone else just because they've got a position of power or they're famous or something. We're all just talking chimps at the end of the day. So <laughs> yes. It comes back to that. We are. So That's I, I don't think that anyone else just because they're famous is is better than better than you because you're not you're not famous or you're not in a position of power or something like that um yeah it's an interesting thing i've really contemplated with that thought mm. like am i better than you who is better than who like what does that mean to be better than so are we all um, we're not all the same though yeah which is a okay. thing well so how do we in, define in terms that? of not in terms of of a skill or something you you work at or something but i think just just in terms of your overall life like no one's no one's your worth like your yeah, self-worth yeah yeah, yeah that, that's probably probably right you, no one's self or no yeah no one's self-worth is is better than or yeah no one's worth is better than anyone else's like right. you shouldn't have to like let's say it's just a random situation but like you have to sacrifice one person who's like a celebrity or one person who's just a nobody like you're not just going to sacrifice the like nobody to save to, and just to save the celebrity like yeah can I, can I that makes me think of a contradiction that we see in society mm. women and children first yeah uh, I personally am not a fan of 
um, feminists. Own, but uh, no, don't even mean that. No, yeah, no, no, no. I mean no, like, but, but just hear me out because. Okay. I got you. <laughs> uh, because I feel like they all want equality, but then they push hard for like the, their their ideas are for women to be like. If you look at like oh, not ev- like obviously not everyone's, but like there's there's a major like, uh, not a majority like a, a minority of of those mm. feminists who are really str- like um, strong for women and don't give any like side of it to men and they're just like oh women should have this and women should have this but then they don't give any of it to to men and that's that that in a way that's I guess talking about women and children first but yeah I don't see why it should just be women and children first instead of instead of men but the, the, that was the, just my side side ramble <laughs> <laughs> it's obviously something you thought about i don't even you know feel... if that made sense yeah but but that's yeah i think i think that was what you're you, my dad too <laughs> it sounds like what you want is a is a open honest fair conversation where we, we talk about yeah, yeah, both yeah, sides yeah exactly and, and it should be even both sides like i'm not i i don't think that that anyone should have it better off just because of their gender or their race or their religion right like everyone's just equal right everyone's just talking gyms again man i gotta make a t-shirt and get you all Mate, one. I, I would i actually when you made this name i was like that is an unreal name how on earth did you think of that oh uh i watch a lot of things and this i just it just i just was watching something one day and i just i just got triggered i'm like man at the yeah, end of the we're day, we're just chimps. Yeah, we're just no. He, he, the essence is like I've heard people talk about like you know what, we really don't know what the hell's going on yeah. with this life. Like, do you know we're on a, a planet? Oh, okay. Do you know we're floating you know through space? You know what's fucked? <laughs> Sorry for the language, but you know no, what's you good. fucked. We put the mic back. Is, is no, how small and and in in like insignificant a way we're just like. Think about so first of all, think about how how small the Earth is compared to even the Sun, and then the Sun is tiny compared to some of the stars in our galaxy, and then our galaxy is the Milky Way. Think about how big that is compared to us, and then there's multiple galaxies in our universe, and then there's a, a theory that the multiverse is a thing. So there's multiple universes. So we're so insignificant but everything just seems so significant like mm. like we're so well we're so small yeah. um in 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 the real like just in absolute terms yeah, in, in relative terms, terms sorry. yeah like we're just tiny but everything just seems so like significant and yeah that's where i think you just need to make most of your life because it's so short and we're only there's this good i haven't actually watched it yet but one of my mates sent it to me um it's a uh thing about it's just like a timeline of from the start of time until the end of time from what from what they believe is going to happen and they think they have a pretty good idea of it that's just in terms of our galaxy uh, i think it's our it's either our galaxy or our universe and we're only at the we're what, like billions of years in but we're only at the absolute start like the literally the very start and it goes for like trillion like whatever's above trillions just just that many more years it's not funny that they project that the universe could continue on yeah or just that it does continue on and what actually happens to it and apparently it just like like shit explodes and all that sort of stuff but like <laughs> i'm not even gonna get into that because if you really think about that it fucks with your head yeah it really does yeah. like and you just think well what's the point of life like wh- like why am i even here if it's if it's if we're so insignificant but it's a yeah. it's a existential crisis that some people go through which is this crisis of meaning yeah and i I think an answer to it is that what is the meaning of life to find your own meaning yeah that's well said that is very well said but people try and answer it with like a certain answer no it's all relative Mm. you you find the meaning everyone's got their own meaning of life exactly what's yours but too many people are trying to search for someone else's meaning of life though right he said, and, that, and that's where it kind of ties in nicely what you say about social media. Yeah, yeah, very well. Yeah, very well said. Yeah, um, it's so so true. People do it all the time. Now that I'm 34 this year, I've just settled. You know what? The considering like he's only 19, he's summed up quite well. A lot of young kids 
you know, in, Alex, you're 26 going on. I'm 37. No, I'm 37. But no, it's good that you see, oh, you could see now, you know that now, Lockie, because surely some people in your co- year 12 cohort, you've been like, they've got no, no, no. Oh, there's, yeah. People that just don't really have any idea. No way. But they're not. I don't think they're exposed to these ideas. Yeah. Parents, environment. Parents. That's it, like nature and nurture. Yeah. Like nurture has such a big influence on. Yeah, nurture has so such you, a big influence on on someone's life, um, and that's where I'm like glad that I was sort of brought up in the country and like sort of can see all that side of stuff. And then you come to the city and you see. That's when you see like people who are sort of like complaining about like I don't know like oh I don't want to put a label on it but like just like um vegans and stuff that are saying oh all these animals are going to like getting slaughtered like um uh like a painful death and that sort of thing but that is literally like the smallest minority of of animals that are that are having that treatment and and like most other like 95 percent of animals are getting slaughtered a horrible word for it but quickly and and they don't feel any pain um but is that true like i don't know this is my question well well yeah it is and and you and And in what countries like worldwide and that's the other thing like um like people are against live export but australia have some of the best like live export um uh like policies in the world and standards in the world like if you were to like imagine like bloody israel's live export policies or or what does no, that mean no, okay maybe not so Israel. exporting live animals for what yeah. purpose for um like agriculture and uh transporting? yeah and probably also like uh i don't even know why they do it maybe maybe to s- slaughter them overseas so then it's fresher because live fresher exporting projects. is done when you have to transport animals from zoo to zoo yeah like china have a panda diplomacy policy all pandas outside of china come from china yeah all pandas they are, we have pandas. deals pandas are so cute Pandas are... Have you ever seen a real panda? Even the name, like the word panda. panda. It's just such a cute name. <laughs> you just want to like hug the name panda. It's such a like fluffy It's our World Panda Day um, later this month, actually. Oh, How shout do I out know? to all the pandas out there. Shout out, Don't be man. Listening. <laughs> shout out <laughs> Zhao Lim. Because um, Chinese, they have all the Chinese names and then we give them... Zhao Lim. <laughs> you know, I'm sure that's a panda's name somewhere. Probably. Uh, uh, but... Yeah. Have you ever seen a real panda? You I would think remember I have, if I think <laughs> no, well, I did no. I went to China with school in year nine. Uh, I'm pretty sure we saw pandas. Yeah, you don't remember it though. No, I probably didn't then because I'd probably remember if I saw a panda. They're I've incredible, seen, man. Same one on Minecraft. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ, that's, that's that's a that's an answer. I was gonna say a good answer. It's an answer. It's an answer. That's an answer. It's a, not a great one. Yeah, you can see a lot of things in video games, man. Yeah, um, but. They're incredible creatures. Like yeah. they're big. Yeah. They're weirdly fluffy. Yeah. And they only procreate like once a year. There's this very short window. Really. Where they can um they're fertile. Yeah. And so when they're in zoos, they try and uh one of their programs is like, all right, we need, we want to help re- uh, help them reproduce, yeah. inc- inc- increase the population. And so they put them together yeah. and they just <laughs> create the conditions and try and hope. Um, but I was, uh, when I went to uh, Singapore's, um, it has a, a zoo that has a, it's like a water safari or a river safari is what they call yeah. it, right? A really, I think really high, high quality zoo relative to all the other ones um, in the world, uh, especially after speaking to the keepers there and getting an idea of like, oh, what's this actually like? And so you just see this panda like tearing away at bamboo and it just tears away. And it's all, it's like, it's, they got five fingers yeah. like us and they tear it away just chuck it in their mouth and they're just so crazy to watch a panda eat yeah and and like it almost looks like a fat human in like a suit <laughs> it's like you're moving kind of like us but you're well, nothing it's like, like it's us. like it's like chimps they're they're so like close to humans right two percent away from genetically dna wise that's amazing we are like. we have share approximately 90 percent of the same DNA yeah like that guy over there he's probably like 99.5% yeah. <laughs> he's really he's close closer. um he doesn't know what I'm saying um <laughs> he's doing gross in his phone um the other thing that is how how have they managed to get evolve a wolf to a dog to like a dog like oh, a yeah. like a little like a up. little chihuahua yeah. or something like how have they managed to get a a wolf that would tear your limbs off 
to a little fucking sausage dog that it's gets just, oh, it's <sighs> placid and yeah. very like it's um what have we done we have taken wild animals and mm. we have domesticated them oh uh, yeah that's exactly right oh okay here's the first thing from theverge.com dogs were probably domesticated by accident when wolves began trailing ancient hunter gatherers to snack on their garbage docile wolves have been slipped extra food scraps the theory goes they survive better and passed on their genes eventually these friendlier wolves evolved into dogs interesting so it's like the behavior to survive and like take food from hunter gatherers mm. cause them to behave in a way that where they couldn't be so predatory they had to be friendlier uh interesting weird but yeah. like how does how does a big scary wolf turn into a fucking chihuahua well we're talking about tens of thousands of years oh yeah of course like yeah. this is this is, we're looking at they say 20 to forty thousand years ago um the <coughs> domestication began based on fossilized records uh, but it is weird and I think so we've done s- what have we done to dogs so much I say we like I've done something like we're a collective human race yeah, so I'll just yeah. go we we yeah you see these like dogs with like pugs their fucking faces are oh. smushed it's like a fucking <laughs> how's that happen man? like one of them is just slammed into a wall and then and then mated with another one and slowly they're <laughs> I don't know. But, like they have like breathing problems yeah. and like some have no, other dogs have like heart problems and yeah. like I'm not saying wolves don't have their problems but it's a weird thing. It's yes. like why is that okay? Mm. We 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 can't eat meat but that's okay? Mm. All right. <laughs> you say so. <laughs> I just want to talk about yeah. both. Oh, I wouldn't I don't want to get started on not eating meat or something like that <laughs> i feel like you would have strong thoughts but you said your pa- like environment uh, nature nurture yeah my um yeah this. good luck with those ones Jeez. you just need to rotate them they rotate in oh, on themselves there you go. go we got some um i have been influenced by my parents in my in most of my views especially my dad yeah <laughs> your dad has some strong thoughts about the world yeah just just people I hold think on pause that my dad uh more Influence. he more just like doesn't appreciate it when there's people that live in the city that try and judge or make judgments about people from the country um when they just have no idea what's happening such as well for example like i'll just use an example as like um the drought or like water water stuff is like they send so much water out to um down the murray river and out down to south australia and out to sea um, every who's every, they the government um, which is not specifically uh, city people but uh, they send so much water down the Murray and out to sea that could be used by farmers during like a drought is this green water or blue water meaning is it water from irrigation or is it water from the sky from the sky okay um, and and it just goes out to sea and goes to waste. And their argument is that, well, the environment needs it, but you could, there's a lot of water going down there. And even if you took 10 to 20%, 10, say we'll take, we'll say 10% of it, which is still a lot of water. Like think about how the Murray River is probably like, Let's look it up. It, well, just like, I'm thinking about how like wide it is or how many, say how many liters go down it. <laughs> So That's an interesting question. Well, it's 2,500 kilometers in length. Yeah. Spans over the east to west of Victoria into Adelaide. Yeah. Uh, you want to know the liters? Jesus Christ. How These numbers go? are so big. Like the basin size, I can tell you, Yeah. is a million square kilometers. Yeah. Like what am I going to well, do like, with that? Yeah. But but like think if that's... Liters. Oh, it's, yeah. So you're, what, what's your case? What's the case he's making here? Just that people should people don't understand like anything people from a lot of people from the city don't understand much about about country life and and farming and that sort of thing not that dad's a farmer but but just in general like um and that they should they like they can have their opinions and everything but don't try and put their opinions on other people i don't know i feel like i've kind of butchered that but (laughs) dad's very good at explaining it, but yeah. maybe I should get uh, Mr. Kennett, yes. Sir Kennett da- on David this podcast. Kennett, da- David, oh, that's a royal name. Chimps. He would have a few things. He would actually be a good podcast guest. Yeah. What does he do? 
Uh, Mum and dad do sheep artificial breeding. Whoa. Yeah. What the hell? Yeah. Sheep artificial. Okay. Sheep so, breeding makes sense, but what do you mean artificial? Like so essentially IVF? the process. Uh, so you take, you collect the semen from the ram yep. and you can freeze it. And then you take, uh, you give, so this is artificial insemination. You, um, you take the, the semen um, and you thaw it out and you give it in, you put, you put it into um, use through, they're tipped upside down on a trolley and um, they've been given like, um, Hold on, drugs tip the, the sheep upside down? Yeah, so you, you put them in a trolley and they're like laying upside down. You tip their legs up mm. um, and you uh, they've been given drugs and stuff to super ovulate. Um, so oh. they're like their eggs are just buzzing. <laughs> they're primed and ready yeah, they're primed to, to receive to, the, yes. the um, ram sperm. Yes. <laughs> and, Why don't uh, they just bang? Why don't the rams and sheep just have it's sex? It's a much higher conception rate. Okay. Um, anyway, the, they... Uh, and you thaw out the semen um, and uh, mum or dad will have like a laparoscope in one side of the ewe's stomach and the other side they'll have like a it's like a trachar tr- or something like that and it's just like a sort of long thing that I can put like a pipette down but it's got the semen in it and then you push the um, mum mum or dad will put the uh, the needle on the end of the pipette into each side of the each horn of the uterus and um, you'll push like a dose of semen into each horn wow. and it's just like a lot more um, that's a really quick explanation it's so a lot easier to like um, to sort of watch what's happening and explain it while you watch right like um, a video yeah but yeah it's uh, good good business like they they work hard for probably probably five months a year they're like flat out and then two months either side of the season. So it's the season's like over summer and like, yeah, sort of five months over that sort of time. And then two months either side are sort of on and off. And then they have sort of five or so months, five-ish months of the year um, completely off, which Down is time. good because it gives them gives them like time to travel and, and have holidays and that sort of thing, which Damn, is... Damn, the sheep insemination business. Yes, it's... Uh, so what we have a lot of sheep though. Yeah. We, like No, n- so not every... Like you'll probably do... The most you'd probably do is um, the most we're doing a day is probably three three fifty. Um, Wait, what? Three hundred to three hundred and fifty sheep. That's a lot. Yeah, um, but like people on stations and shit in like New South Wales would have like I don't know, hundreds of thousands of sheep. Is there really that much of a demand for sheep? Yeah, we'll think about how much lamb, how much wool. Um, wool. Yeah. yeah. Wool, wool, and wool and, and lamb are the two. I wonder what the vegans things. think about wool. Is that okay? Can we shear the sheep? Um, is that okay? Th- some of them don't like it because of the way that some shear is pretty like, aggressive. Yeah, um, and also they can cut them when they shear them. But ah. like, sheep have a much higher pain tolerance than than humans. Okay, so I think let's work. I think that that that, that that's one we could probably. Uh, that's the other thing on. is like, if vegans really want all this stuff shut down, I feel like they would they wouldn't notice the changes until it and like even the economy like the australian economy there's so many sheep in australia sheep and cattle and like just farms yeah. and that sort of thing that like we export so much of that stuff and that would seriously fuck the economy if yeah. if we stopped doing all sort of sheep sheep slaughter and 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 like um cattle slaughter and that sort of thing and just like using animals for their products um it would it would yeah seriously yeah. harm the economy there's, there's no doubt that there are millions of people's livelihoods and yeah. lifestyles oh, and that's the other thing is like like imagine if 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 vegans wanted to shut down farmers and that sort of thing like how how that would affect so many people's lives not just and you don't even think like just just the farmer's life it's like it's like the um people who they sell it to and then the, those people sell it and like yeah there's just so many steps and people that it would affect like you think when when someone shuts down like a factory or something it it gets rid of all of those those workers and it gets rid of the products that they were producing so then that affects people that were consuming those products and it has a chain reaction yeah it it does have a chain reaction and so the conversation is nuanced and so it's not black and white and, and it's like if there is no switch that we can flick that automatically flicks because 95 to 90%, 95 to 97% of the world population consumes meat products. Mm. Okay? That's a lot. Uh, yeah. It's, it's a lot. Yeah. Okay? If we were just to flip this on its head, 
and have 95 to 97 plant only, mm. suddenly this revolutionizes and transforms every economy in the world. The, the agriculture, like a lot of the animals that we love and um, appreciate and care for, they wouldn't be here anymore. Mm. Like uh, domesticated animals, all the cows that, and the sheep and the goats and mm. the, all these animals that you grow to care for mm. and respect, um, well, a lot of them are only here and have a life because we gave them a life mm. because we there's a demand for them to have a life, yep. right? If every let's just let's just giving I'm just giving like a thought experiment. Yeah. Let's just say everybody stopped eating meat, right? All of these cattle and sheep and lambs and um, etc. etc. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Suddenly, what what happens then? I don't think it's like a no consequence scenario. Yeah. Like not at all. Do no farming, okay, do they start entering our streets and running rampant in our streets? Like I've seen <laughs> kangaroos yeah. f- f- uh, f- uh, f- hopping through streets because mm. they're overpopulated. Mm. Guess how many kangaroos are around Australia? Maybe you actually know. Oh, I don't know. Hundreds of thousands. <laughs> Millions? You're gonna be blown the fuck away. How many? Fifty million. <laughs> there is two kangaroos per person. Jesus. For the relative to our population, fifty million. They're produ- they they do aerial surveys to estimate. Bloody hell! They are growing, right? Yeah. They're so much so that they are the the f- the, f- the food available to them to keep to sustain their population. A lot of them are starving out, mm. right? And so now we have a conversation of like, okay, factory farming definitely should be abolished. Definitely don't want to agree with. Uh, unhumanely slaughtering animals where you see that they're all penned up next to each other they're not able to move um that's the classical definition of of factory farming that is not humane yeah. and is not and that's kind. what i'm saying that is such a small minority of of things that are actually that way whereas most most cattle and sheep and right and chickens and goats and yes. whatever live free range right especially in australia yeah. where we have yeah, so yeah, much yeah. land especially in australia that's the thing whereas in probably in places like the UK, like you look at how many people there are compared to how much land there is. Yeah. They have, and like mum's done some work over there and they have, um, they do all their work in, in sheds and like, because it's so cold and there's snow and stuff, like they have to have massive sheds where the animals live when it's that cold. And like, I'm sure they'd rather be under that shed than getting fucking snowed on in the middle of winter when it's negative 10 degrees and blowing a gale. And, so and I'm they, saying we give them safety next to each other, huddled in warmer under a shed. Exactly, we we give them safety. Yeah, right. And if we right. if we just step away from it all, right? It's not a no. Like I say it again, it's not a no consequence situation. I think you can only guess some of the things that may happen. Mm. But who's gonna? How will these animals like repopulate? Like, will they continue to grow? Will they dwindle off? Like, and I don't we've. Know. I feel like we've evolved to do this with animals for a reason like if if we were supposed to evolve to to just eat plants then i'm sure we would have evolved that way right like we we wouldn't have evolved to eat eat meat and anything like that omnivorous yeah both yeah right um and we're talking about the large majority of uh tribes and sex throughout the world throughout um history over the couple million mm. years of of fossilized records that we have there have been I, I believe there are some small minority of examples where uh, there is a predominantly plant-based uh, diet mm. but if we look at the totality of evidence it appears to be omnivorous type of eating for the majority of the time yeah and this is that's okay though that we can eat seasonally as well. Like that's something we've forgotten to do. Food mm. variety, food variability. You know, people beat up all these, build up all these food sensitivities. Why is that? Multiple reasons. But one is because we don't have food variety. We eat the same mm. foods over and over again. Oh, I find I do that. It's a, it's a big factor to a micro, poor gut microbiome that doesn't have microbial diversity. You have less microbial diversity, you're more susceptible to certain autoimmune issues, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. <coughs> yeah. So, get more variety in. Eat the eat the weird plants. Like, anyone know what a rutabugger is? Nope. I or a no. swede. That's the same thing. Uh, yeah, I know what that is. You know what a swede is? Yeah. Okay. He knows what a swede is, right? 
Um, it's like a, I think it's root vegetable. I don't know if you need a classification. Um, but like all these obscure vegetables, like when's the last time you just like cooked up some, roasted some turnips? And yeah. Just, I don't know. <laughs> what? Look, bridge, shut up. It's a root vegetable. Yeah, he makes some weird sounds. Yeah, food variability. It's, it's really... And eating seasonally because now we can import and export throughout the whole world. Yeah. And we're finding right now how reliant we are on China yeah. because... We're fuck now, aren't we? Yeah, what you going to do, baby? You ready? You ready? You got a month worth of food? I'll take the, I'll take the risk and... <laughs> I guess you can fast for a fast month too. A month. Yeah, I mean, you can't do it. Oh, Tafaji. Oh, who was doing that? Um... Uh, One of the clients here? Yeah. Ivan. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, Ivan's in the middle of a 30-day fast. That He's is nearly so done. fucked. That, like, fucked in what way? I just don't understand how you can survive. Most people wouldn't dream of doing it, Alex. That's because most people are soft and weak. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Now, now I want to do it because he said that. Polarizing your audience and saying they're soft and weak. Really good. But, but, no, I'm saying most people who wouldn't contemplate it. I'm like, let's talk about it. Alex, I need to talk about the top of your chip. Um, I feel like... Most people here wouldn't do it, especially because most people here are athletes and they don't want, like, they yeah, want to optimize their performance. Yeah, I, I get it. Yeah. I'm, I'm talking about, we're talking about longevity yeah. benefits. We're talking about spiritual, emotional, mental um, benefits that are well beyond the physiological, too, right? But I'm saying if you're not even willing to contemplate not eat, okay, let's forget a couple of weeks. I'm talking about just fasting in general, yeah. right? If you're not willing to contemplate that I can go a day without eating, then you are addicted to food. Yeah. Jeez, you I are addicted. You are addicted to mouth pleasure. That's fucking sick thing with that, isn't it? Yes, it's a reality. We are we are addi- we are an overconsumptuous society. Mouth pleasure. <laughs> That's a funny word, but that is a good point. That is fucking a good way of thinking. You are addicted to food. You can't go and party without it. Yes. Yeah. But hold on. Well, the body can go like. We've been indoctrinated. Yeah, to bre- like breakfast. Breakfast. The most important meal of that. Yes. Cereal companies. Oh my god. My, it's it's my unbelievable. They told you all fat is bad, yeah, and then they put low fat and put the sugar in there and yeah. artificial sweeteners and all that fucking yeah. bullshit. Yep. I, you know what? I, oh, oh, here he is. Is he coming on? Is he coming on the pod for the third time? Bo- Jeremy Borzillo <laughs> just walked in. He's uh, one of the legendary Talking Chimps podcast guests. The legend of no, Woodford SSC. Days. It should be called Brickfords. <laughs> <laughs> well, brick brick is stronger than wood. He is. He's very strong. Can someone talk to me about these autophagy? Can someone talk to me about these talking someone chimps? <laughs> what are you doing there? Are you getting some? You don't like it just because he didn't reference you in that post. No, no, no. he didn't oh. give you credit for that uh, photo. What are you doing? All right. Um, Overconsumption. We yeah. live in a, a society that's addicted. Like, or we just we overconsume information. We overconsume food. We overconsume um, stress. All these things. And so, there are so many benefits to taking a break from food, mm. the consumption of food, well beyond the physical. Mm. So, try it out. See what happens. If you want to know the actual re- the the come kind of the physiological benefits, go to strengththesad.com. That's where I put all my notes so you can see them for free. There's a whole fasting document up there. And uh, have you ever fasted? Done intermittent fasting. Yeah, not, not that's a good start. Not for more than a day. It's a good start. Or not for more than half a day. Okay. I did, what did I do, like 16, 8 or something? Yep. What was the reason behind that? Um, just wanted to try it. And like, <laughs> see, Brick, um, I probably after I finish playing footy i'll i'll do it because i enjoyed it and it's a good way to like keep a healthy like when i'm this is when i'm like older like good way to probably keep a healthy weight and that sort of thing because then like i i like eating like bigger meals mm. so at the moment it's not a problem when i'm young and i'm exercising heaps but if i'm like 35 40 years old and i'm i'm not exercising as much um or not that i don't think i'll ever stop but you know exercising, you, t- you turn into the person that's like Oh, I guess so many like older people coming up and talking to me. Oh, I, I remember um, they show me photos of like what they used to be and what yeah. they used to look like. like. Motherfucker, I don't care who you used to be. Who the fuck are you now? Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't want to be no like beat up, old, fucking decrepit, overweight, weak man. 
I mean, but that's, you know, I'm saying this now. Mm. This is good though, because you put pressure on yourself because if 25 years from now, I'm still doing this podcast and I'm some fucking just <laughs> like weak, ugly man, then- <laughs> Mouth pleasured. That's on me. But I, mouth, I won't mouth be. pleasure obsessed, man. Right, exactly. That's <laughs> mouth pleasure obsessed. That's a lot of people are, man. That's a great term. I'm going to use that now. Yeah, man. Just people mouth want their pleasure. mouth pleasure. They want that donut. <laughs> they want the sugar. Give me the head. What's your some. What's your go to cheat food? My go to gluttony. Yeah. Okay. I can be a glutton. Yeah. Oh. But it's purposeful. It's not like. Like if I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do something with purpose. Mm. This is, I think people have a very poor relationship. I and mean, I'm not answering your question in the in, old, in classical fashion of me. I'm gonna go around a circle <laughs> first and give you a nice preamble. Um, uh, gluttony. Um, yeah. I think it's important if you're gonna be gluttonous, give yourself some purpose and direction to it. Mm. All right, I'm gonna enjoy some food that I wouldn't usually eat. Make it the best. If you're gonna have a donut. Go to Daniel's Donut. Yeah. Get the best fucking donuts you can get. And don't and don't go into it. Don't don't, don't like binge it and then regret it. Like right. have have one and fucking enjoy it. Well said. And then and then be done. Yeah. Well said. Yeah. Because I think and I've been there. Like you can have like psychological guilt and mm. remorse. Almost like you feel bad for yourself. Like oh man, I ate like shit. Okay. You know how you get around that? Just make a decision. Mm. Yeah. Make the fucking decision. Yeah. All right. I'm going to eat whole food, clean food, six out of seven days of the week. Then on the seventh day, I'm going to do what Dwayne The Rock Johnson does. And I'll, I'm giving you an example. And then I'm going to, I'm going to eat a cheat meal. I'm going to eat seven yeah, cookies. So. Yeah. Right? And you're giving yourself a purposeful schedule to enjoy gluttonous food. Yeah. Um, and it can be psychologically guilt-free. So, yeah. if, man, if a really good like Italian pizza, like I like I had at a nice restaurant the other day. It's like I'm at a nice restaurant and I'm with my family, friends, and loved ones and girlfriend. Like I'm gonna, I'm gonna enjoy the best meal I can mm. that I want to. Yeah, and that's the thing. You don't you don't want to put pressure on yourself to when you're going out for dinner. And you, you like fuck it up, order something healthy. Right, because it's, enjoy, and that's where like your life is so so minus like. What was the word I was using for it? Um, insignificant? Insignificant, that's the one. Uh, your life's so in- insignificant that enjoy it while you... Like, and time alive is so small in terms of the universe. Enjoy it while... In terms of the universe, yeah. yeah. But I don't know. I feel like um, people say life is short. Yeah, life is short because people waste so much of it. Yeah, exactly. Right? That's like a... It's like a set part of a Seneca quote. Seneca's an old uh, uh, Greek or Roman philosopher. Um and yeah, people waste a lot of it, mm. right? Squeeze the most you can out of this fucking life. You don't just have to do one thing. You can be the person you want to be. Can you do anything? You, you, can, you can't, I don't think you can do everything you want and be everything you want to be, but I believe you can try. Mm. And through trying, you build character mm. and you squeeze the most you can out of the fucking toothpaste tube. Mm. And uh, you can rest at night knowing that you did everything you needed to do. Very good answer. Another question. What if you, about food, <laughs> about mouth pleasure, ah. if you went out for breakfast, what would you order? Uh, good question. Um, I usually get two things yeah. because I need a lot of calories. Yes. So I will usually get some type of egg based dish Mm -hmm. so but when you go to a nice cafe especially in Melbourne like we're pretty lucky we have a really good food scene Mm. Um, they'll do some fancy shit with it they'll add some nice garnishes and all these different cool things might be some egg dish um, and and it might be some uh, if I'm sharing a a dessert I might fuck around and be gluttonous and have like a if I'm doing like a like a a pancake nice waffle dish or I might get a nice fruit and granola dish or yeah. oat dish how, how do you like your eggs cooked i like it scrambled i like it omelet good old omelet um sometimes they'll have like people make like potato roasties with like avocado and they'll put like a poached egg on top and it'll crack the egg on top i don't really go out for, for breakfast yeah. often i will always cook i will cook 99 percent of my meals yeah what about you what's your answer for breakfast yeah uh yeah, probably poached or scrambled eggs and then a bit of like 
avocado, yeah. spinach. Classic. Tom- um, tomato. Yeah. Mushrooms. Do you like mushrooms? Yeah. Yeah. People that don't like mushrooms are childish. <laughs> <laughs> they have childish what a taste quote. buds. <laughs> People who... Lockie Kennett, 2020. People who don't like uh, mushrooms have childish taste buds. Yeah. I love that. Oh. Got to get some fungi in your yeah. life. Oh, I, I don't understand how you don't... How, they don't even taste like anything, but then if you put them with like Good garlic texture. and chili and... Oh, yeah. Ooh. Unreal. Like some sautéed yeah. mushrooms yeah. with some garlic. Beautiful. Nice. Ooh, like shiitake mushrooms are really yeah, have some good, good nutritional benefits. Yeah. Mm. What's your What's your specialty dish? If I was coming over for dinner, what yeah. would you cook me? Oh, good question. Um, what am I going to cook you? I'll, I'm going to cook you some kangaroo. I'm going to cook you a kangaroo dish. Yeah, right? right. Have you cooked that before? I, I eat it every day. Really? I eat kangaroo about twice a day. Seriously? Yeah. What What um is it like? What does it taste like? Very lean meat. Yeah. Right? I was about to say, is it, is it quite lean? Very, these, these motherfucking kangaroos are strong. Have you seen how much they can jump? Have you seen their tails? I have seen their tails, but what are you trying to say? Oh, they're just beasts. Like imagine getting slapped by one of their tails. Like, oh, imagine, right. imagine chopping off a kangaroo's tail and hitting someone across the face. <laughs> Haven't imagined that one. It would knock you out. But I reckon- It would knock you out. It's got some thickness to it. Oh, serious thickness. I've seen kangaroos like Serious fine. girth. <laughs> <laughs> kangaroo girth kangaroo girth no um and people get okay i have to preface this by saying i i get where people come from um where they get like oh you eat kangaroo you're a fuck you you're a i've never had someone say this to me but like i can get what people think why would you eat kangaroo it's like it's our national one of our national emblems number one so people get emotional about it i'm gonna eat it now you've mentioned it well let me explain to you actually some like we talked about before okay kangaroo if we're gonna eat meat i'm not saying like this is not appealing to the argument of like you eat meat at all this is like if you're going to eat meat and you support the factory farming and uh grocery store bought cheapest meat possible Mm. let me explain to you some of the benefits number one kangaroos are wild animal i'm eating wild meat we need to get rid of them well not completely but like we need to reduce their population and that's another damage so much shit on farms that's another yeah. uh, um, element to it. Okay, so number one, they're wild, so they're killed humanely as possible mm. with uh, they're shot. a web. They're shot, yeah. and they're shot in areas strategically where they can die as quickly as possible. Yeah. Okay, good. They're wild, so they're not subject. They can they can roam naturally. They can forage. They can have children. They can have their own families, mm. and they can do their thing in the wild. Yeah. Great. Okay, because you don't get an opportunity to buy wild animals often from a grocery store, okay? That is a good point. It is probably the most organic thing you can have. Like, yes. you're not going to have a fucking kangaroo farm where, no, they, where they doesn't exist. farm kangaroos for them. does meat. not exist, exactly. to my knowledge. If something, there's a kangaroo farm out there, that's a bit weird. <laughs> Shout um, out to kangaroo farm. <laughs> yeah, I, I hope not. It's, I don't think no, it's necessary it um, at all. There's 50 million of them. There's two per person in this, in this population. They are overpopulated, okay? As you said, they affect people's land. They affect people's farms. We see them roaming, hopping in the streets. There's numerous videos of that. Yeah. Um, some of them are starving to death because there are so many. Yeah. If your arg- if your argument is that if you're eating factory farmed meat, but you're at, you're against kangaroo, then you should really reconsider and consider these then you're wrong. perspectives. <laughs> I'll never say that. It's not a math equation. Yeah. It's 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 not as simple as that because the people's emotions in it and that's a problem. Yeah. And um, they are. They're very lean meat mm. and think and they're actually from a health perspective they are healthier they're more nutrient dense let's even think about the idea of it what what do you what, do, what would you rather eat an animal that can j- let me tell you how far a kangaroo can jump do you remember far or, or high um i'm giving a a, a horizontal displacement okay Jesus Christ. The legs and feet of kangaroos give them the ability to jump 10 feet high, which is about five meters. Kangaroos can cover 40 feet in one hop. What are you talking about? 40 <laughs> feet? What? That'd probably be one there at top speed. Top speed. But still, that's ridiculous. What's that in meters? That's like, that's 12 meters. Come on, son. It's ridiculous. That's some stride length. Go on. What are you going to eat? An animal that is that explosive and powerful Beast. or a fucking bitch-ass, weak-ass chicken just chook-chooking away 
and it's, it's farm. It's a red meat too, isn't it? So it'd ha- yes. be higher in iron than chicken. Uh, I would put my money on that without and, and seeing that. a lot of people are iron deficient. So a lot of people are iron deficient. Get your iron in, kids. Yes, kids, especially women who yes. have uh, intense menstrual cycles. Yes. But that's a generalization. Shout out to women. Shout out. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to women I love me some women um, Cook me up some women so wh- <laughs> I'd cook you some women <laughs> But I'd what, make you women What do you What do you um, What do you cook kangaroo with? What, uh, what's so you, like what, what for, dishes? For example this morning I'll have a kangaroo patty And I'll cook it with a bunch of vegetables mm. Okay so I have a variety of vegetables Today was Zucchini um, Beetroot And Kangaroo patty So I'll have a, a assortment of vegetables with it just cooked um, in some olive oil. Then later on in the day, I might have a kangaroo mince dish. Yep. So I'll have, I could, I could have some uh, rice and mince, kangaroo mince, or and what are some uh, sheep or goat um, cheese on top, yep. which is fucking phenomenal. Yeah, goat's um, cheese, unreal. Yeah, I get, I get all my cheese comes from goats or sheep. One, the lactose uh, content is lower. Really? Yep. Two thirds of the population is lactose intolerant. Yeah. Most people are sensitive to lactose because we don't have the enzyme called lactase yep. to break it down talked about that on one of the other podcasts as well but i'll continue to talk about it until i'm blue in the face um or i will have a uh, diced kangaroo yeah. um you can get a kangaroo steak as well yeah so do they have kangaroo mints at like the supermarket yeah you can anything? get it from woolworths yeah okay. k-roo is K-Roo. the brand it's a big big sport if you want to Fuck. sponsor the podcast original, original. um <laughs> shout out k-roo, shout out k-roo. it's the it's the only kangaroo you can get from a store like woolworths yeah. um and so you could you can make a casserole dish like i made a sweet potato and uh uh eggplant um casserole dish that sounds good and yeah man it's it really the options are open mm. um but another big benefit it, the nutrient density so basically is that because they've been eating more more than just like grass or something or is it just i don't know the diet of a kangaroo diet of i know that they're um that plant only i believe yeah, uh, be. Eat grasses, flowers, leaves, ferns, moss, and even insects. Oh, okay. Like cows, can- kangaroos regurgitate their food and chew it before it's ready to be totally digested. Didn't know that. Um, all kangaroos are herbivores. Well, if they eat insects, are you really a herbivore? <laughs> okay. Different story. That's uh, a story for a different time. Yeah. But... You think about also like in America, their, their versions of that is like deer and antelope and things yeah, like that. Yeah, And so the proportion of meat you need for the same amount of protein is much lower. So for example, 100 grams of kangaroo is more of a protein rich source, more of a nutrient dense source than 100 grams of chicken. Now, I haven't looked this up. So if I'm wrong, I'll be very, very surprised. But if we talk about the nutrient density and lean, yeah. I'm just look it up, God damn it. Um, Nutrient density. Because we always fact check on talking chips. Well, it's important. Uh, we don't do any any prep for the show, but it's just a <laughs> research so what do you, as you go. Give me how many chicken? How many? Pro, how much protein in um, chicken uh, per hundred grams? Give me your guess. Hundred grams. Oh shit. Fuck. I could be very wrong, but I'll say about. 25 odd I'm getting it from different sources alright chicken okay chicken we got this is the USADA is the source 27 grams of chicken per 100 grams oh close um, okay I, th- I think I'm wrong here guys oh k this is the actual source from k the ca- kangaroo mince is 21 grams per 100 grams so I can eat a dick then I was wrong and I'll yeah. I'll cop that <laughs> I'm fuck very off su- Alex I'm <laughs> I'm very surprised there, man. Um, but you know what? I'll eat a dick. But we're all about that iron content. Uh, but the, where, where it does stand apart is the inflammatory differences. <laughs> yep. So there was a study on a Wagyu beef. It's an Australian study of yeah, a Wagyu yeah. beef um, sorry, from a cow versus a kangaroo meat. Mm. And what they, they measured all these inflammatory markers postprandially, which means after you eat, for the, f- the hours after you eat. Okay, there's about a three hour time window. What they noticed was the kangaroo was significantly lower in inflammatory markers like IL-6, TAG, CRP, which is C-reactive protein. All these inflammatory markers they noticed were significantly lower relative to the, the Wagyu beef. Okay, yeah, right. now why could this be? Number of reasons, one, the Wagyu is higher, much higher in saturated fat. Mm-hmm. That could be a reason. But regardless of the reason, 
inflammation is one of the biggest contributors, if not the biggest contributor to disease and cellular damage mm -hmm. and it contributes. So if we can mitigate inflammation, especially if we're going to eat meat, which does stimulate a lot of these pathways that stimulate cellular growth, then why don't we pick the most environmentally friendly, humanely sourced, nutrient dense foods possible? And that is wild animals. I'm gonna go home and buy some K Roo. There you go, K Roo. You're welcome. There's a fucking sponsorship for yeah, you. Yeah, fucking sponsor us, K Roo. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah. So I'd cook you some kangaroo. That's, yeah. Because I, I feel like I've seen it at, at Coles or something, but... It's a small section. Yeah, it'd be extremely small because not many people would eat it. But. Yeah, but I cleaned it out. And now, I'm, especially I'm doing, I'm planning my preparation if mm. I need to isolate myself um, from this virus. Mm. And uh, I'm planning out, all right, I'm going to need, you know, quite a bit of kangaroo and I'll probably clean out most of their shelves there. Maybe, maybe just buy a couple of kangaroos and grow them. <laughs> And then kill them and uh you know people fresh kangaroo you need um tags you need uh to get um licensed tags just in case anyone's wondering you can't just go out there and start killing your own kangaroos mm. you yeah, yeah you've got to have that. you got to have um a permit to do it correct um the people, government you can hire people if if you have a serious kangaroo problem at your farm you can hire people to exterminate is that them. is that something you hear about you've yeah, heard yeah, about yeah really it happens like pretty often yeah really so what will they do to, how do they damage the land uh, damage fences a lot. That's the main thing. And fences are bloody expensive. Right. Um, probably just like eating feed and that sort of thing. Um, and at the moment in a drought, feed is, well, yeah, feed's pretty... Are we pretty, in a drought right now? Well, yeah, we're probably coming towards the end of it because there's been a lot of rain up north. A few floods, say. but... Oh, maybe, probably not even really coming to the end of it. But yeah, we've been in a large drought. And speaking of rain and drought, the Murray-Darling Basin... Um, has averaged, are you ready for this? 24,000 gigalitres per year. What the fuck's a gigalitre? A lot more than a litre. <laughs> well, there's a litre and a megalitre and then a, probably a gigalitre. See, it's, probably like, it's probably like a thousand litres. These numbers get so big. So that's like... I can't even... Two, 24 million... No. This is the lowest rate of the world's major river systems. About 6% of Australia's total rainfall falls into the basin. Mm. It's not much for such a big basin. Mm. 24,000. And then fucking most of it just goes out to sea. Is that right? That is correct. All right. They don't give any to the farmers. No? Oh, not much. But who controls what you can give to the farms? It's just a river that flows. Government, yeah. People are people it. live on the river, uh, and if if you're caught siphoning it, like you'll be in a bit of trouble. Really? What if I got my little water filtration after oh, I have a drink? Yeah, but you're not going to fill like water your farms with that. Uh, I water a I water off a single maybe plant. Maybe a veggie patch. <laughs> <laughs> I got one of those. Really? I got a veggie pod. It's it's a game changer, man. Really? Um, I haven't harvested yet. I'm growing a veggie pod. Yeah, a veggie pod is a company that sell. Like if you live in like a smaller area, not that I do, but like it's great for smaller areas mm. that want to grow like a, an elevated stand up um, vegetable patch yeah. without having to dig into the ground. Yeah. And so it's like a little platform. You can get sort of big plastic container you build. Yeah. You put the, your soil in, your fertilizer, your, your manure, and uh, you plant your seeds and you cultivate I like it because it's like, it's like a bit like life. Like you gotta, you gotta sow your seeds, you gotta cultivate, you gotta take care of them. Gotta grow, and then you reap the rewards later if you've kept them well. And but it, it basically so you're not so reliant on yeah. supermarkets. Well, the different you and you can taste the difference. Oh yeah, so much. Like we have a veggie farm at home. We and do. Yeah. Oh no, not like at home. Home where my parents. What, are. what do you grow there? you'd have to ask mum okay bit of everything yeah um but like you notice even just like the broccoli like you'll notice so much the difference in taste between the broccoli that mum grows and the broccoli you buy at the local iga yeah ridiculous like so much nicer and just like earthier as well which is like nice because you know it's like more organic i guess well, there's no pesticides yeah exactly right they're they're not sitting on i don't know what other look we don't really know what different supermarkets have to spray on their foods to keep them longer. Yeah. 
But you know that happens. Yeah, of course. In various places around the world. Because some of these fruits and vegetables, their shelf life is three to 12 months. Yeah. That's not normal. No. <laughs> if your shit is not, perishi- is not perishable within that time period, is it within, a, not that, within a couple of weeks, then some funky shit's done to that oh, yeah. fresh food. Because like, like, we just got some fresh blackberries yeah. in our fridge. Holy shit, bro. These are amazing. Yeah. Right? But already in under two weeks, you could see white mold growing on them. Yeah. Okay. All right, cool. That's feedback. Yeah. Right? That's like, okay, it's a fresh food off a tree. It's going to grow mold. Um, but one, so we're not so reliant on supermarkets. Number two, you're getting more nutrient, theoretically more nutrient dense foods. They try and do studies on organic and non organic. It's mixed yep. results. And um, it is cheaper and more convenient once you start really growing some a lot of vegetables mm. and so i think everybody encourage everybody just make us make an investment into growing your own vegetables i knew nothing and i still relatively know almost nothing about growing vegetables but they're so helpful when you go to a nursery yeah or like a garden world they'll hook yeah. you up yeah grow some vegetables lucky i i do need to i've got a little patch at the back where i could you do there yeah. you go man i just feel like i'd forget about them one day and they'd perish yes well that's that's don't have a child then (laughs) don't get a dog grow some vegetables first that's a bit stiff i reckon (laughs) no but the dog the dog gives you gives you something back all the time ah so what you're saying is you're impatient you remember it's there ah it's it's gonna whine if it doesn't if it's starving (laughs) it's gonna shut up you're not hungry (laughs) (laughs) what would you cook for me uh I would probably either cook you a nice piece of steak. Oh yeah. Or yeah. or a I have this nice like tomato bacon, like fresh tomatoes, bacon, onion, chicken, spinach. What else is in it? Some sort of pasta that I make. Mm. Pretty nice. Love um, that. I I like that one. I've, I've become good at making that. Shout out to mum. <laughs> <laughs> Always don't shout know, out. Don't know if I'll tell her that I'm fan on a potty and she'll listen, but um, oh, if she see, if I don't you, know. She probably will listen. Actually, well, if you put on social media, which you don't yeah. really use, you have no logo on your Facebook. Where can f- people find you? Almost nowhere. Yeah, I'm a mysterious man. Man, keep it low key. Um, yeah, probably probably one of those two. Any, I love pasta. Like cook a lot of pasta. Have you ever tried those? Um, I because what are my uh, nutrition guidelines that i follow mm. is i will mitigate gluten as much as possible yep okay i might only have it when i eat out something yep. special and so that means sourcing non-gluten variations of pasta yeah have you ever tried those pea chickpea chick yeah, yeah uh pulse pasta y- i have and Thoughts? the only reason i taste exactly the same as normal pasta the Great. only reason i don't buy it as much is because it's so expensive oh. and like as a uni student yeah um, but ideally, yeah, I'd love to buy it. Jackson Edwards actually got me onto it because he, he's obviously... Um, plant-based. Plant-based. And he said... Um, I was just asking him a few things and he said, yeah, something you could do for pasta is um, is try pulse pasta and like getting extra micronutrients out of your pasta is... It's a game changer because at the same time... Half I'm Half a percenter. Huh? A half a percent, not really a one percenter, but you're trying to maximize yeah, like performance. Just, yeah, yeah, better than your competition. Yeah, and so and the thing is, like, if you look at the nutritional uh, comparison of a a pea bean pasta, yeah, um, or a legume based pasta, mm. is that they're a lot. They have a lot more protein. Yeah, yeah, they do. They got like a oh, serving well, could, as twenty, thirty grams of protein. Yeah, yeah. About, yeah, probably like 25 odd grams. And if you could combine that with like a good quality meat, now you're getting a plant based protein and a meat based protein because we know plant based doesn't, it's not, not as bioavailable, but it's pretty close and it doesn't have as many of the amino acids. Yeah. But if you combine it now with meat, now we're fucking superhuman, baby. Yeah. Omnivorous beast. Omnivorous talking chip beast. We're, we're really stimulating MPS then. Woo! That MPS is so stimulated. <laughs> <laughs> they say, uh, that actually i'd have to look at my notes i forget it i was going to look up up it was going to explain the muscle proteins is how many grams of protein you need to maximize it there is a range that i've summarized from my notes that um you need uh per meal it's a pretty large range um but 
I'm not going to bother looking it up now. You can look it up yourself. Be what, like 20 to 40? No, you're going to make me look it up, are you, too? Yeah, no, it's fine. All right, great. Um, I just go off about 30. Yep. Minimum 25. Okay, I'm going to look it up now. <laughs> Fuck, you fucked this up, man. Um, What about coffee? Do you drink coffee? No coffee. Really? No stimulants. No caffeine? Nothing. Well, actually, I have tea. I have a green tea yeah. in the morning now. I've introduced that. But, but that- I doesn't have caffeine it, a small very small amount yeah, okay. right but i'm doing it for the the, the poly the polyphenols yeah. and the antimicrobial effect and the fat oxidation effects they can help stimulate yeah. fat oxidation um, um what's the thought process behind no caffeine uh number one i don't i don't like it so don't like coffee no have right you did you ever drink it or i've tried it yeah. i've sipped it yeah. uh, i don't like it no, and fair that's enough. Simple a lot as that. of people don't. But some people, people love it. People drink they live it. Off it. People drink it and don't like it, but they drink it because it. I love it. Yeah. But look, I, man. I only have one a day. It's a tool. Maybe two. And there's benefits to it. And yeah, yeah. Cognitively, well, um, f- stimulate uh, fat, and it's perform- per- proven aerobic performance enhancer. Yeah. That's great. Benefits your aerobic performance, which for footy, like obviously, I want to want to help myself as much as I can. There's so. a lot of benefits, man. Yeah. Um. Go on about the coffee, but I think people become reliant on it. Mm. I think that's where it gets dangerous. Well, when you're drinking three or four cups a day, that's what I, I don't want to get to three cups. I, I think the most I've had in a day is I might have had three once, but probably two. A one off is, is different to a yeah. consistent. Oh, exactly. I, and like the most I'd ever have is two. Mm. Um, and that'd be probably on, on a game day of footy when I'm trying to get more in. Okay. Um, but then I try I try to have at least one day, like try to have two days a week where I don't have any, just so I don't become reliant on it. Right, and because... Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, and also, so I, so the effect when I do have it is is, bet, is greater for like, like the day before a game of footy, I won't have coffee. So then the next day, I probably doesn't, it isn't even a thing, but then so the next day when I do have it for my game, I get a better, greater benefit from it. Right. It's just... Probably not even. Probably doesn't even work. But like, no, it works. Yeah. No, there's research behind it. Okay. Caffeine, it's pretty clear. Yeah. No, it's. Oh no no. As in, as in like as in like trying to like not having coffee the day before to to then increase my benefit of it the next day. Well, it. D- oh, interesting. Oh, okay. Um, potentially, I can see that. Cause like, if you yeah. if you remove it from your system, you like taking a break from something often sensitizes that compound. Yeah. When you take it again. Yeah. Because you build a tolerance. Yeah, yeah, that, that's the thing. Not building a tolerance. That's why I try and have one at least, at least one. Hope, try and have two days a week where I okay. don't have it. Smart. I like that. Mm. Um, but I, I do love a good cup of tea. Yeah. A cup of tea with honey. Oh. Like pre bed, soothing. Um, stimulate sleep. Just any time. Yeah. Because we all tea? know that high GI carbohydrates helps you get to sleep. Do well, we yeah. All know that? Do you know that? <laughs> <laughs> they will. Don't they? Don't they help? It's carbohydrates that help stimulate things like serotonin, yeah. especially pre-bed, yeah. um, pre-sleep, um, which help decrease sleep latency, time to fall asleep, and d- increase sleep quality. Yeah. Um, but actually, I'm not going to get into that yeah. high GI part. But the protein. Let's talk about the protein. With protein supplementation, protein intakes greater than 1.6 grams per kilogram per day do not further contribute yeah. to resistance exercise training induced gains in fat free mass yep okay so approximately so, go ahead oh was, yeah just gonna say you don't have to people were trying to eat like 250 grams of protein a day and unless you weigh fucking unless you're weighing bloody 500 500 kilos you don't have to weigh 500 yeah. kilos no because no nah, and like, because unless, if unless it's 1.6 yeah unless you're weighing like um hundred and something kilos like you don't have to have that much protein well you got to find because like but but probably the problem people have is not getting good quality protein yeah yes and that is a different thing right um current data suggests that dietary protein intake necessary to support metabolic adaptation repair remodeling and protein turnover generally ranges from 1.2 to 2 grams per kilo per day so there are different studies that and there's another study here that give a confidence interval of, of 1 to 2.2. 2. Mm. So there are these intervals, confidence interval in research. Have you done statistics yet? Research methods statistics? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you remember confidence intervals? 
probably if you say it. Okay. Well, I'm saying it and yeah. I'll keep talking. Yeah. But it's important because we have to be able to understand how to interpret research. Yeah. Because most of the motherfuckers out there, I'm talking to you motherfuckers, most of you just headline read and you get excited yeah. and you don't go, you don't understand, not out of everyone doesn't, not everyone understands everything. Out of our own ignorance, we don't yeah. understand what are these, what does this mean? Yeah. Confidence interval is 95% that we are sure that the evidence falls between this range, okay? And so there is this range of one to 2.2 approximately, and you can see other studies reference slightly different ranges mm -hmm. that you, you may be 1.5, I may be 2.2, mm -hmm. he may be 2.5, he may be one. So you have to be willing to experiment that like, okay, if, I'm, if you're 80 kilos, someone's 80 kilos, you may need to maximize muscle protein synthesis and minimize degradation. You may need upwards of 100, 130 to 160. Yeah. Well, I try personally, I try and get like at least like 150 a day. Okay. And that's just personal. Just, yeah. And also if I'm trying to like at the moment, like I'm trying to just maintain my weight. So if I'm trying not to eat too much, then I'll like obviously protein's most satiating macronutrient, so I'll probably I might even up that a little bit just to just so I'm fuller for longer. Right. And that's don't, smart. And don't like then crave something later. And then there's that's that's a good tactic if you want to be satiated for longer, if you're trying to minimize if you're trying to maximize fat loss yeah. and just psychologically a better habits with food. But another thing is like a big question I always had was like, all right, how much protein is actually getting absorbed? Mm. Like, because it just gets them passed through like urine and feces yeah. and evaporated. Like if you have too much, how much is too much? Mm. Right? Is 20, 30, 40, 50? Like at what point are we not absorbing? So Brad Schoenfeld, have you heard of him? No. He's a big researcher in um, hypertrophy, muscle protein synthesis. And he did a, a summary of some of the research um, and he's, he noted, it's important to note that proposed limits of 20 to 25 grams of protein maximizing MPS was derived from studies where the subjects only did small amounts of single joint exercises. So mm -hmm. we're talking curls, extensions, indicating that intense resistance training sessions increase the demand for high quality protein to maximize MPS. There is also evidence in, in the elderly indicating they need a minimum of 45 grams of high quality protein at a meal to maximize whole body net protein balance. So when you're old, have more protein. Fucking smash the protein. <laughs> because we know things like sarcopenia happen, which is yeah. age related muscle wastage. Yeah. So uh, muscle net protein balance is the balance between um, degradation and gain. Yeah. So we want to make sure it's, we, we're, we're always tipping the scale in gain mm. right so the proposed 20 25 grams to maximize mps uh yeah single joint exercise indicate yeah i just repeated oh why did i repeat the same thing over and over again all right so we'll we can see that look 20 25 grams may be okay for people who are doing very light activity yeah some si short interval single joint stuff but majority of people aren't just going to be doing that no uh, results showed that uh, MPS was greatest in those who consumed four servings and 20 grams of protein, suggesting that no additional benefit and actually a lower rise in MPS when consuming the high dosage 40 grams under another conditions of another study. Um, results showed that myofibular fractional synthetic rate was 20% higher from consumption of 40 grams compared to 20 grams. And there's another study showing... Okay, so what do you do with all this? Because that study contradicted the other study. So what do you do when, you, when all this stuff kind of contradicts sometimes it's like oh is it 20 grams is it 40 grams i would if you have goals of like i want to gain body weight muscle mass i want to maximize performance then i would always err on the side of doing a little more proportion yeah 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 so if the study's telling you 20 grams and but there's an interval of 20 to 30 i would always go to all right i'm gonna yeah. go 30 at least go closer to 30 than yeah to 20 because it's maximized performance. Yeah. But if you have like if you have more aggressive fat loss goals, then maybe there's a there's room to go. Okay, maybe I can be a little bit more aggressive on the deficit side. Yeah. Um, not too far where I'm in fucking up my endocrine system, but yeah. you know. 
You got any other questions for me, young young Lockie? Oh, that you've planned in your head? I don't think so. The only one the only one I'd planned was that that what do you have for breakfast? Because someone at footy asked me that once, and I thought it was a great question. It's it a conversation a question. starter. It's a good question. So that's a conversation. It was a breakfast. conversation two hours in. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Well, you just ripped out the questions, and I was like, oh, I'll just have that one in the back of my head for for when I get a question. <laughs> yeah, got you. You got anything else you want to chat about? Uh, I don't think so. We talked footy. We've talked your career. Do you, w- actually, no. I wanted to ask you: When do you think you would stop playing? When is the moment? You stop playing football. When's that like, all right, this, I'm done. This is too much or it's, I need to move on. Uh, the moment I'll stop playing VFL or semi-professionally or trying to play that yeah. will probably be when I stop enjoying the amount of training I'm doing because that's what's required at that level. Does that make sense? So like, like the amount of training I'm doing at the moment, once I stop enjoying how much of that i'm doing and and kind of think oh like like training's getting becoming a bit more of a chore than than fun is when i'll probably stop playing semi-professionally but when i completely playing footy i don't know like there'll probably be a moment in life when i'm in my 30s or something and i'm i'm or even my 40s when you know if i've got kids or whatever and other commitments Okay. It'll probably overtake it. So it's, it's the enjoyment you take, the yeah. joy you take out yeah. of it. At, at least, at least, at that, at least at the level I'm at at the moment. Okay. I think, yeah. We'll see what happens later this year, my friend. We will. We will. Thank you for uh, joining me. That is okay. On Thank you for Champs. having me. Of course, man. Made my debut on a podcast. Absolutely, man. I think I'm going to do that with a lot of people. Yes. Just having conversations with people. I'm actually surprised how many episodes you've rolled out already. You're just I, smashing them. I'm go- I want to go hard, man. Yeah. I want to be consistent. Yeah. I want to do a minimum of one every week. No, that's good. And uh, yeah, I, I wonder how long I'll keep this consistency for. Mm. But I just want to talk to everybody, man. Yeah, it's good. It doesn't even feel like a podcast. It just feels like a chat, but we've got mics in front of us. That's it, man. That's all I want to have. Yeah, that's good. Uh, I've fulfilled my intent then. Hey, I, I actually reckon like it'd be fun just doing a podcast, just like with your mates, like, doing it with someone and then you just like interview your mates yeah exactly yeah that's it lucky kennett alexander sandalis see you later chimp it's been a pleasure absolutely my friend